Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Taylor, Texas, home of the Ducks. We are here at what is the second game for Taylor on this very nice football field. Taylor is a District 14 Class 4A Division I football team. Their head coach is Rusty Perzer. He has 39 players on his roster. We only saw 35 on the field. Things to watch out for for watching against the Ducks of Taylor tonight. They have an All-American punter in Ryan Hansen. Now, we watched this kid before the game. He is putting the ball 70 to 80 yards down the field and with good hang time. He can change the complex of a game very, very quickly. One of the uh, Lockhart coaches came in before the game and talked to us a little bit, said the kid lined up for a 56-yard field goal in his last football game. So this All-American kicker could be a factor in tonight's game. And I can tell you one thing, I've never seen anybody punt the ball the way he does in high school. Now other players to watch. They have an outside linebacker in Byron Sweet. He had 87 tackles last year. They have wide receiver Josh Blue, 14 receptions. They have a quarterback, senior Cole Harms. He'll lead the way with the, the throwing attack going for the Josh Blue attire. Running back Jalen Teeler and defensive lineman Elijah Tellez. Uh, their last game they played Robinson in which they lost 41-21. to Now for your Lockhart Lions, they come in tonight's game 1-0, District 14, Class 5A, Division 2. Head coach, as we know, Brian Herman. He runs his slot T offense. Last game, we had these stars step up as players to watch. Quarterback Jaden Garza threw two touchdown passes. Defensive Elijah Sanchez, his, he was just pressure all night long on the quarterback with the rush. Running back Daquan Ellison Sr. had 100 yards rushing. Running back Jesus Aldana had 100 yards rushing. Running back Noah Garcia had a huge game, not only running the football, but leading the blocks to key up runs. Alex Sosa, linebacker captain, was all over the field making tackles. Then we have Eddie Tukar, who blocked a punt in that contest and was defensive player of the game for the contest last game. And then offensive lineman Jame Guerrera, captain, also doing his thing on the offensive line, creating holes. Last week's players of the game on offense, the entire offensive line. And uh, we have some. Uh, we have a player we uh, entered or interviewed tonight. But what we're going to do first is we're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to come back and have the coaches uh, interview with Emilio the Sarge Juarez. But when we come back, I'll get everything set up for that. So we're going to take a break here. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Taylor, Texas. Now, we're going to get ready to go in the coach's interview, but first and foremost, the team for tonight. Our QA, the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry, all the way from Missouri. He's doing the thing here, as you all know. Randy Fry, big man to get this all started for us back in the day. Randy, we're glad to have you on with us as a QA. McKilty Altier, a senior at Lockhart High School. Basically, this show does not go on without her, and she does a good job for us. We're going to eventually get her to start speaking with us, <laughs> and we're working on that with her. And uh, But anyways, McKelty Altier does a great job producing for us. Obviously, the color commentator, the guy that does the stats, the guy that sees the things that I don't, Emilio, the Sarge Juarez, and again, myself, Scott Smith, doing play-by-play. -play. Now I'm going to hand it off to the Sarge, and here's the coach's interview. Yes, definitely. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Lockhart Lion fans all around the world. And this is the first Lockhart National Bank pregame show. And right now we're going to get straight to the Christ Market Coach's Corner that I had an interview with uh, Coach Herman at the, right there at the 50-yard line here in Taylor. And uh, without further ado, here's that interview, the Christ Market Coach's Corner, right now. All right, welcome today for another Christ Market Coach's Corner. I'm Emilio the Sarge Waters. I'm here with head coach of the Lockhart Lions, Coach Brian Herman. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm good, thank you. All right, quickly, let's talk about last week. 
It was a great game against the uh, Travis Rebels, which uh, Locker came out 54-7. to Give us your thoughts about last week's game and what were you pleased about and what, do, what did you see that you could move on and uh, work with during this week before the Taylor game? Uh, it went about as good as we'd hoped it would go. Uh, the, probably the best part was we got out of it mostly healthy, had a couple dinged up, but nothing you know, season ending or anything like that. But we got a lot of kids to, on the field. I think all healthy 48 bodies got on the field and played in some capacity throughout the night. So that was probably the part I was most excited about was make, getting the opportunity to get everybody on the field, uh, get their feet wet before we get into some, some more games in the season. So uh, now we did see some things that we had to fix. We got exposed in some areas, and that was good for us to use that as a learning tool. So we, we had some special emphasis on some things this week. Okay, even though it was third, it was a senior night Friday night. There was a lot of sophomores that stepped up and you know did real good, real big, did real good in the second half. Uh, talk about those sophomores who are going to be here for the next three years. Yeah, we have five sophomores currently on varsity, um, and uh, all I think all five of them had you know plays you know uh, significant plays in the game. So that was exciting to see. We have a good number of juniors, and then we have a decent number of seniors as well. So it's it's a good mix of kids. We're really excited about them. Most definitely. All right, tonight we got Taylor here in Taylor, Texas. It's a nice stadium, nice field and everything. What? Who are the key players for Taylor that y'all have keyed on during the week? Well, they're, they're a good football program. You know, we're, we're, we got our hands uh we got our, our, our hands full today. They lost their home opener last week. Uh, they weren't supposed to lose, according to some, but uh, they lost their home opener in this brand new stadium. So I know they're coming out to get that first win in, the, in their new stadium. But they've got their quarterback has, has got a real strong arm. Um, he, he lets it go pretty quick. We feel like if we can get pressure on him, that that, that might help him. Uh, may not be too comfortable if, if we can get pressure on him. They've got a couple of running backs, number nine, number two, 22. Both are good running backs. A couple of receivers, number six. Seven, number 14, number two, I think number one also. Uh, so they've got you know a good mix of kids offensively, defensively. Um, you know they've got a, a number 42 and number 22 play linebackers, and then they've got some guys up front that uh, are very active. So we're we're gonna have to be sharp in all areas, and uh, it's really no different than any other week. But uh, we just have to step it up each week. Okay, Coach, well, I'll go and let you go, and uh, good luck tonight, and let's bring home another Lion victory. Is there any, anybody you want to give a shout-out to before we uh, close out tonight's uh, Coach's Corner? Uh, anybody that can't make it tonight. You know, I hope everybody's listening because I know, you know, a Friday night and there's, you know, question about weather and such. I think it's going to hold out for us, so I think we're good. But anybody that's at home watching or listening, I should say, uh, you know, we really appreciate your support and can't wait to get back home and hear you in the stands. Okay, Coach, all right, well, good luck tonight, and uh, – Let's get that W. Thank you. Go All right. Hey, once again, this is uh, Milo de Sarge Juarez, and you've just listening to listen to the Christ Market Coach's Corner interview, which will be played live on the Lion Country Broadcast Network at 7:05 for the. And once again, that was uh, Christ Market Coach's Corner with uh, Coach Herman, who had a lot of great things to say about uh, the sophomores and the team and their chances for the Lockhart Lions to win tonight. And uh, I believe uh, Scott has an interview with a couple with a player for the Lockhart Lions that he had down there at the on the field earlier today. But it is a great night for football. I see the Lockhart fans already piling into the stands. It looks like a good, uh, quite a bit made the trip out here, the 45-minute trip to come down here to list to see tonight's uh, football game. And like Cole Turner was saying, if you're unable to make the trip. Go to Lion Country Broadcast Network, click on the link, and listen to the game with everybody. All right. Well, we're here ready to go. I tried to get two people uh, to interview tonight, but I couldn't find one of them. He got into the building too quick for me to talk to, and once they get in the building, we're not able to talk to them. But I did get the one guy that I was wanting to talk to, and that is senior lineman Andreas Hernandez. Hernandez, he actually is uh, one of the keys to last week's uh, win is he did a great job blocking up front. And this is uh, kind of what Andreas had to say. This is Scott Smith, Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports. I'm here with senior lineman Andreas Hernandez. And Andreas, three questions for you for tonight's football game. What are your goals for your senior season? I would like to become second team all district, and if not that, at least an honorable mention. All right, that is an awesome goal to have. My second one is for tonight's contest. We're on the road. First road game as a senior lineman. What are your goals for tonight's game? 
obviously get the win and I think the offensive line we all have that mentality to just go in and then hammer away at them very good and last week you guys dominated on the offensive line the last one's the easiest question in the world I give it to everybody who do you want to give a shout out someone you love someone you care about who you want to give a shout out to uh, obviously my mom she does a lot for me and then my coaches for you know obviously teaching me the, the game of football very good Andreas I thank you very much for your time tonight and I wish you good luck thank you all right, that was Andreas Hernandez, and uh, that's a nice young man. Um, it's funny to me to see these guys hit people the way they hit them as offensive linemen, and then to talk to them as an individual, you don't expect what you see. And very nice kid, very complimentary, and uh, I, I guarantee you his mother's proud of him. Most definitely. A very soft-spoken young man, but... You wouldn't be able to tell that by the way they played against Travis last week, which is something that they're going to have to have a repeat performance for tonight's game. As mentioned before, the whole entire offensive line was a, was a Chuck Nash offensive player of the game. So they're going to have to pretty much perform that same, keep that same pace going into tonight's game against Taylor, which carries a little bit more speed than Taylor, than, a, than a Travis did last week. But I'm pretty sure this offensive line has been coached by some great co coaches with Coach Herman and his entire coaching staff. I'm, we're going to see, probably, hopefully we're going to see a more dominant offensive line, especially now since we got one more week of non-district play next week, and then we got the district play opening up in two, week, two weeks from tonight. So it's going to be exciting to see this Lockhart offense tonight as we did last week, and if they if, – they perform like they did last week. It's going to be a long night for Taylor's defense. Well, you know, and one thing I did forget to mention, yes, Taylor's a 4A school, and we're a 5A school. But this Taylor Ducks team has gone to the playoffs seven straight years, and the one thing that the Bible said, Campbell's Bible of high school football said, they're shooting for their eighth, and they've got a quarterback that they think can get them there. And with the punter and a kicker that they have that is not just an all-state player, this kid is an all-American player. He will be playing on Saturdays, and if, and again, I will be shocked if this kid isn't playing on Sundays somewhere yes. because the punts, I'm not kidding you. I've, I've seen some good punters in my day, and this kid is the best I've ever seen. Most definitely, and we're probably standing about 100 feet above the floor, above the field, and he was punting that ball above eye level from where we're at and traveling about 65 yards, which is an amazing feat of its own. I mean, granted, he had a little bit of wind, but golly, you got to give it up to a man who got a tremendous leg that way. And could, like we talked about <coughs> earlier, he could change field possession in a hurry. doesn't matter where they're at on fourth down. If he's coming in to punt from his own one-yard line, it, with the leg like that, Lockhart be face, could be facing first down and ten from their own one yard line. <laughs> well, and you don't you don't have in high school football very often, especially if it's not six A. You might see a few in five A, but to see it in four A is unheard of. A guy lining up to kick a fifty seven yard field goal, you just don't see that in high school football unless it's the big time programs. And that is again at a four A school. That says a lot about this kid. And, you know, and we, yeah, here we are talking about the other team's uh, player, but, my God, he's an All-American. You've got to talk about him. And, again, we're talking about senior Ryan Hansen. I guarantee you he's going to be kicking Saturday somewhere because we had our own Juan Acampo. Yeah. And he's kicking Saturdays. Yes, he is. And I think this guy has a little bit better leg than Juan, and Juan has got a great leg. Yeah, he does. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a great game tonight. And uh, you, once again, you're listening to the first Lockhart National Bank pregame show. And uh, right now we're going to go real quickly and go through the Meitler Storage game break for tonight's broadcast. Tonight in our district, Alamo Heights travels to Laredo to take on the United Longhorns. Medina Valley will host the Bernie Greyhounds at Panther Stadium. Memorial Minutemen travels to Burbank to play the Bulldogs. Bernie Champion heads south to Laredo to play at Rutledge Stadium against Veterans Memorial Patriots. Fredericksburg Billies travel to Tyvee to take on the Antlers at Antler Stadium. And Uvalde Coyotes head to Eagle Pass 
to take on Wind Mavericks High School. And uh, right now in action, Kennedy is hosting Edison, Edison Golden Bears. And right now at 7.05 left to go in the first quarter, it is Edison 7, Kennedy 6. And uh, Scott, last week, District 14, 5A Division 2, they went 3 and 7, so 3 and 5 as a district with uh, Alamo Heights, uh, Lockhart, and Medina Valley. I mean, uh, Memorial, the only three teams from the district coming out with victories. But Tyvee had a real, real uh, tough game against Trippin Springs. And right now, you know, a lot of people are saying Tyvee's a front runner for the district championship. But they play tonight against Fredericksburg. And when you talk about rivalry games, that's a rival ga rivalry game right there in its own. That's 20 miles apart. Oh, wow. You know? And Lockhart don't have too many rivalries anymore close in the area like we used to have back in against Gonzalez and Lulin. But Lockhart's moved up in the district since then. And all our rivalries are within the district now. Of course, with the top three, Tate, uh, Tyvee, Bernie Champion, and Alamo Heights, those three games right there is going gonna, is gonna to be real big for the Lockhart Lions, as well as all of them. But to beat one of those three teams is always a big plus for the Lockhart Lions no matter what. All right, well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break and a commercial action here. So I'm going to hand this off to McKelty, and she's going to get us to break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAC Sports with Fight Magazine. iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons, 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons, pain body. We won't steer you wrong. All right, we're back here at Taylor, Texas. Lockhart is starting to get themselves onto the field. The Ducks are already on the field. They are in all green with a little white trim. They've got a very cool silver emblem on the side of their helmet and it looks like we're getting ready for the national anthem uh, as we noticed before the lions don't even have their tunnel to come out to so hopefully that's not a bad omen right there <laughs> well i can't tell lockhart acts like there's no maybe they're not going to the national anthem just yet i i can't hear the crowd mic so i'm not for sure Because Lockhart's just kind of standing there waiting to run onto the field. So we're trying to find out what's going on here. Right, here they come. They're here we go. Getting, here we go. I guess and we're seeing what we don't see when they're in the tunnel. Here we come. Your Lockhart Lions coming off a 54-7 to victory last week against Travis out of Austin. Led by their cheerleaders. Wearing all white with their maroon numbers, maroon socks and maroon helmets with the lions well, on the side now. We'll direct your attention to midfield as we turn the microphone over to head referee Patrick Harris for the coin toss. So they're actually going to do a coin toss with a referee and a mic I have a believe here. I don't oh. think I've seen this before. So I guess we'll go ahead and turn down our mics and turn on the crowd mic and listen to the coin toss. All right, so real quick, we're going to look at our seniors. We have number 59, Jame Guerrera. Captains tonight. For we the have Ducks. number 21, one, Daquan Ellison. Number 80, Spencer Nelson. And number 35, and that's Alex Sosa. Those are our senior captains. For them, it is going to be number one, Jojo Torres. Number five, Cole Harms. Number 20, Byron Sweet. And number 55, Elijah Tillis.
going to be able to hear them talk about it. They're talking to the kids right now, um, but it doesn't sound like they have a mic. So, I, I mean, if if it's like it's always been the way I call it, the the the, the Herman Law of uh, Theory, Lockhart will kick the ball to start off the first half and receive the ball to start the second half. Gee, Emilio, <laughs> you act like you've seen this before. That feels like deja Co vu every hey, time. So Coach Herman decides to defer the kick to the second half. I can't believe it. Yeah. He's going to kick. What is he thinking? I don't know. <laughs> and it works all the time, but there but, you have it. But you know what? That's always been his thing. He he wants to kick the ball off to start the game because his thing is if Lockhart can have the ball before halftime and score and then get the kick off to start the second half and score again, you're looking somewhere between a 6 to 14 point swing in that short amount of time right there. So, once again, Herman's uh Herman's uh theor theory of uh, law is true. Lockhart will kick the ball off to start the game and uh they will start the second half second half returning the kick. So, all right. Well, here we're getting ready for the national anthem and then we're the going to game time band, under the direction of Mr. David Modal. We're ready to go. The Lockhart Lions are going to be going from right to left on your computer screen. I'm looking in the stands here for the Taylor, Texas fans, and yes, this is a very big stadium for a Class 4A, but there's not very many people here. As a matter of fact, we have almost as many people here as they do. Um, again, this is going to be a game where the kicker could make a huge difference. Um, we talked a little bit, Coach, uh, he talked, Emilio talked to Coach before the game about our defense, and basically it was explained to me is we have about three returning starters from last year's defense, and it's a, some basketball players mixed in with last year's JV players, and it's worked well so far. Our defense was dominating last year, our last game, and we're getting ready to kick off. It looks like number 17, Alfredo James, will be kicking it off. So our special teams will start it out. There is a slight wind coming from right to left, so the wind's kind of at our back, but it's not a wind that's going to be too devastating. So number nine, Jason Martinez, and number 12, Ronick Nayak, are going to be back to receive. James getting ready to kick it off, and we're under game two. There's the kick. It's a short kick. Down to the 5. He'll bring it out to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Out to the 25 where he's brought down. There's a fumble. Lockhart recovers it, but will they give it to him? It does. It does. It does. It was Caleb Jennings, the junior. I love that kid in basketball, and I love him even more in football. Caleb Jennings comes up with the fumble recovery. It'll be Lockhart's ball, and I'm trying to see where they're going to mark it. It looks like the 26-yard line of Taylor. Emilio. It looks like they're having a little discussion, but you know what? Once again, yeah, it's going to be Lockhart ball first down at the Taylor 21-yard line. But once again, just like we saw last week, I mean, we see it here on special teams. Lockhart's just not going in there to make a tackle. They're going in there to hit. 
and uh, the returner got hit from behind so hard, knocked the bar loose. Knocked the ball loose and lock our lines ball first and ten. Here we are. Oh, they jumped on us, so it's we're going to get sides. five yards. Definitely. So it's things are rolling the right way. Hopefully we can keep it going. Yes. They, they actually had a lineman who was running in late, so we were going to get a penalty flag against them either way. So here we are in the slot T offense. We haven't run a play yet. We've gained five yards. We, <laughs> we get a fumble recovery. The one thing, though, Emilio hit on a lot last year, and I agree, our last game, and I agree, speed. This is the fastest Lockhart team I have seen since I've been here in three years. And Th some of the hardest hitting. Oh, my gosh. They wrap you up. So here we are, slot form, or type formation, slot T, first and five. So they're going to put some more time back on the clock. We literally are going to be uh, – Four seconds into this game, and we've already gained five yards and got a fumble recovery. <laughs> I do like the PA guy. He's pretty pretty loud, but he's straightforward. They're going to pass on first down. Garza's is in trouble, and he's going to go down. What pressure. Great pursuit there. That was number 11, Hugh Shelton, the defensive end. Huge loss for the Lockhart Lions. Drops them back all the way to the 32-yard line, an 11-yard loss. Second and 16 for the Lions. They're going to bring out a play with number eight, Devin Clark, the senior 6'5 receiver. He starts safety for us. He's a weapon in his own right. He's in single coverage out there, so we might want to throw it up to him. They're going to give it to Quan Ellison on the right side. He's just fighting his way. He gets ganged up there by number 20. And that is Byron Sweet, the man we talked about, making a great tackle. So far, Lockhart got a couple uh, quick breaks their way, but it's been kind of downhill since. So we gained uh, one yard, it looked like. Yeah, we gained two yards on the play on that stop right there. Great awareness by the Taylor defense to make the stop on a very tough person to tackle in uh, Daquan Ellison. So the line comes, comes up to the line here. Gar's under center. He's going to give it to Daquan Ellison again. He's going to fight up the middle. He's going to get about four yards on the carry. He's going to be obviously be way short of the first down. Looks like number 43 made the tackle. That's Jerron Carver, a defensive end. He's a junior. He's going to mark him down at the 27. Daquan Ellison was about to cut back in and slipped on the turf. And as he was, coming, as he was trying to get his balance, he was tackled by the Taylor defense. Pickup of three yards for Daquan Ellison. So we're fourth and 11. You know we're going for it. We're in field position of going for it. There's no reason to do anything. Garza under center, man in motion. They're going to go around the corner with Garza. He pitches it out to Aldonia. He gets around the corner inside the 20, but he was pushed out of bounds way short of the first down, so we'll turn it over on downs. But Aldonia with a nice run there on the left side. So they will turn it over back to Taylor. It was an unfortunate that Jaden Garza got tackled on the very first play for the Lockhart Lions. It was a huge loss of 11 yards. Put the Lions deep back with the second down and 16. And, but they were almost close to making that first down. But either way, Taylor takes over first down and 10. So Cole Harms is going to bring his team out. They got one receiver to the left, or to the right, two to the left. They've got their running back there. Um, that is Teeler. They're going to hand off to Teeler. Draw play up the middle. He gets around the left side. He's out to the 25 to the 30, a first down. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds by Devin Clark. I think he got out to about the 38-yard line. They ran a draw play right at us, and it was a great run by Teeler. It was a big 18-yard run for the Taylor Ducks. First and 10 at the 36-yard line, and they're going to work. They're not waiting. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Teeler in the backfield, a man in motion. They give it to Teeler again up the middle, a big hole. He's brought down there, and I did not see it. looked like number six, Elijah, and that was Elijah Sanchez yeah. bringing him down, but a big gain by Teeler. And the running back is down. He, he was hit hard by Eddie Tukar, dislodged the helmet from the of the running back off his head. So, I mean, Eddie Tukar laid a hit on the running back, and, Unfortunately, the running back got hurt. Hopefully, he's going to be okay. But, so, man, I, like, like I said, Lions 
they're hitting hard. And Eddie Tucar just showed it right there. Tucar hitting from the the front. Sanchez from the right or from the side, and he's down. And even with him being dinged up, when the helmet comes off, you got to sit out of play. But right now, they're just trying to see if he knows where he's at. This would be a good time, I guess, to take a break and get a commercial going there. So we'll get things queued up. years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. All right, we're back to Taylor, Texas, second and two. They walked him off the field. He looks like he's all right now. You getting him a drink of water. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They're going straight up. No, they're going to fake and go to the pass. He hits his receiver at the 50-yard line. He connects with Michael Schneider, gets it right out to the 50-yard line. They move the sticks again. So uh, first play or pass from Cole Harms was a nice pass. Hit his receiver, and they're moving the sticks again. First and 10 from midfield. 9-16 to go here in the first quarter of play. One receiver to the right, two to the left. Shotgun formation, H-back, and it looks like maybe false start. False start on the Taylor Ducks. It'll move them back five. So this game started out what looked like Taylor couldn't do anything right, and then Lockhart was getting everything going their way, and then it kind of reverse rolls right now, and then Taylor's back to getting a penalty. So we'll see what happens here first and 15. Most definitely. It's like, just like Coach said, they got to get in the quarterback's face to give him some pressure. Oh, with a high snap, and he Eddie just Tukar. drilled. Eddie Tukar knocks Harms down as the snap was over his head. A, lo a big loss. Eddie Tukar was back there in a hurry in that backfield to get that quarterback sacked. So we're going we're gonna to be at 2nd to 20 at the 40. We'll see what's going on here as we've got three receivers to the right, one back, man in motion. They're going to fake. They're going to throw the ball. It's a pass over the middle to number 23, and he's knocked down about the 45, 46-yard line. And number 23, that is Jason Sassetto. Once again, 82 cars in the mix for that tackle as well as Faustino Gonzalez. So we are now down to third and 15. Ball's at the 45-yard line of Taylor. Three receivers to the left. I'm guessing another pass play possibly. Yes, it is. Harms is looking. He's going to go deep, and he's got two receivers wide open, and that's going to be a touchdown as he hits number 14, Santiago Estrada, and that is a 55-yard touchdown pass. Great pass by the quarterback right there. Had two receivers that got behind the defensive uh, backfield. Definitely a mix-up in the in the coverage plan, coverage scheme over there. But you can't take away from the beautiful pass from the quarterback to the receiver for a Taylor touchdown. And here comes Mr. All-American to kick it. Snap is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So, number 27, Ryan Hansen makes the extra point, and that's with uh, 7.52 to go in the first quarter. It's 7 and nothing, Taylor. It's definitely, definitely a tough way to start the first, pretty much the first drive of the game for the Lockhart Lions defense for, after getting the first turnover on the kickoff return, but then Lockhart Lions wasn't able to do too much to it on their drive. Taylor comes back, first for their first actual possession, and they come out with a 55-yard bomb for a touchdown on third and 15, which it looked pretty slim for them at the beginning of the play. But after that bomb, Taylor's up 7 to nothing over the Lockhart Lions. All right. Well, you know, we, <laughs> we got punched in the mouth on the road. Now what are we going to do? That's what we're going to have to figure out here real quick. And this is going to be uh, – 
our first time of seeing this All-American kicker kick off. Will he put it in the back of the end zone? Both teams are coming out to line it up. And I'm looking to see who we've got. It we looks got like Caleb, Caleb and... I can't see who the other one is. Is that Zambrano? Yeah, Cortland yeah, Zambrano, Zambrano and uh, Caleb Jennings are deep to receive. Caleb Jennings is the one that came up with that fumble recovery to start the game. Okay, so now we're getting ready for the kickoff, and here we go. We're going to get to see what Ryan Hansen's made of on a kickoff now. He will kick it. And it will not be returned as he put it halfway through the end zone and it went out the backside. So we'll get it first and 10 at the 25-yard line. We'll come back out in that uh, slot T and hopefully be able to gain some yards this time. Our offensive line is going to have to establish themselves like they did last week. They're definitely going to have to, especially after that first drive, which pretty much sputtered from, from beginning to end with the, with the first play getting an 11-yard sack. Jade, Jacob Garza, or Jaden Garza, had a had a couple of receivers, just didn't have the time to throw it. So hopefully this time they've worked, they fixed out the fixed the snags on the sideline, and the Lions offense will be ready to rock and roll. All right, here we go. Slot T type formation. They're going to go up the middle. I want to say that's Aldonia, but I can't see a number. He gets out to the 31, and I still cannot. Noah Garcia. Okay, it was Noah Garcia that got the carry. So it'll be about second and four after a gain of six. 7.25 and counting here in the first quarter. Lockhart Lions are down seven to nothing. That's the first offensive touchdown they've given up this year. Second and four. Man in motion. Flags are flying. Now we're going to see who it was. I thought I saw a defender hit us. Still waiting for the call. They're going to call the off. It's going to be offside, so that's going to be a first down for Lockhart. I don't know what Jaden Gars is doing with his play calling, but he's definitely making them jump. That is the second time they've jumped offside. The ball's now spotted at the 37-yard line of Lockhart. Again, tight formation. They're going to give it around the corner. It looks like it was Noah again, but they only got about a yard on that carry. No, Aldonia no, got it. it. Was Aldonia, with the Aldonia run. got it. He picked up one yard. No, they're going to say he got two out of it. Second and eight. The ball is at the 39-yard line of Lockhart. So far, Taylor's defense has played really well tonight. As they, Taylor does have a quick defense out there, and that's one of the things that uh, that uh, you could work against a slot T, but this Lions offense will have to wear them down just like they did Travis. Devin Clark's out left. They're going to hand it off straight up the middle to Daquan Ellison. He gets a pretty good surge up the middle. Going to gain about four, maybe five. We'll see where the marking. It looks like he got out to about the 42-yard line of Lockhart. They're going to pick up three yards on the run. So third and five. So it's going to be uh, Spencer Nelson that's bringing the play in. Spencer also is a soccer player and a quite a good goalkeeper. They come up to the line of scrimmage. Tight formation again. Quick to Daquan Ellison around the left side. He's up the middle. He gets a first down. What a run by Daquan Ellison. He's going good to pick up job. the first down by half a yard. Number 31 made the tackle. Thomas Vega, a linebacker. He's a junior. Well, the line is starting to get involved. Yes. The, the clock is rolling very quickly. We're already down to 540 in the first quarter. And once again, that's the patience by Daquan Ellison to not get into a position to where he can't, he's trying to run through bodies. He's letting his linemen create spots for him and holes, and he's running right through them. Alex Thompson brings the play in. He's another junior. He's playing wide out on the right side. They're going to go outside while Donya around the Oh, my gosh, Noah with a great block. Aldonia with a great run. Gets it across midfield. Out to the 45-yard line of Taylor. Great first down run. Great run by Aldonia as he, he, was, he had his palm on the back 
of Noah Garcia as Garcia was leading the way for him. So they're like, they're like, let's go. Noah Garcia, for being just a sophomore and a big one at that, is a great blocker out of the backfield. Yeah, and that's one thing that one of the coaches was talking to us about the sophomores is these guys are big. So we have two guys split to the right, two guys in the backfield. They're going straight up the middle. It's a handoff for a first down. I don't think that was Daquan. Who was that? That's it Daquan. was Daquan. It was Daquan. He moves the sticks again. It seems like every time Daquan Ellison touches the ball, he gets a first down, at least pretty darn close. First and 10 down to the 40-yard line, 4.30 to go here in the first quarter. Lockhart's down 7 to nothing right now. And once again, that Lions offensive line is creating that hole for Daquan Ellison. And just another patient run by the young man also. So here we got a guy split to the left. They're going to go to Daquan Ellison up the middle again. He's running hard, and he's going to get at least six, maybe a seven out of it. Depends on where he's spotted. No, they're going to mark him at five-yard carry. Down to the 35-yard line. And I'm sure that with the pace that we're going in this game, I, I would have to think Coach Herman's going to be very happy with the fact that we're running the clock down. We're maintaining possession. We just need to get in the end zone now. Yes, and once again, Daquan Ellison, he used his power running back for him on that one. He was hit right around the 38, <coughs> but kept pushing his legs and got a couple extra yards on the run. So here we are, tight formation. They're going to give it to the left side. Aldonia gets hit in the backfield. He's going nowhere. He's brought down by number 20, Byron Sweet, but it was number 42, Reagan Odell, who slowed him down in the backfield. A big loss. And here we are again in trouble at third and eight. So Taylor... Picks and chooses their times to get a lot of pressure on us, and they've done it twice, and they put us in big holes both times. And this is going to be one of those because it would have been second and short. Now they're looking at third and eight. Pavel Riviero brings in the, the play. It's going to be tight formation all the way across. Man in motion. Hand off to, is that Noah? I think it was Noah Garcia. He didn't get Yeah, Noah Garcia. Any. Garcia gets about two, maybe three. He's down to the 37, so he got one. And uh, brings up fourth down and seven. So it'll be interesting to see what the play call will be in this situation. It looks like they're bringing Adam Romero in. Remember Adam Romero with a great touchdown reception last week. Adam Romero is the starting point guard of our high school basketball team. He's quite an athlete. Hasn't played football since his, uh, J or his middle school days. They're going to roll out right, trying to give him time. Garza's going to run it, but he's not going to make it. And there's a hold, I believe, called. I think they're going to call holding. Garza was able to get down to about the 35, but there is a flag. Now oh, they're talking to Coach Herman right now. Maybe it's a defensive penalty. I have noticed that both lines are kind of after the play, pushing and shoving. I don't know if maybe someone – had a little extra hit in there after the play. I, I'm not sure. I didn't see it. But there have been some scrums going on in there. If you look at it, the offensive line is still out there. So, And that was a fourth down play. So this could be a penalty that could be going against uh, Taylor. So what do we have? They're going to redo the down. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So Lockhart's going to give up the ball. I'm not real sure what the line, the stick crew is doing, though. Oh, is that our first down? Yes, sir, it is. First down for the Lockhart Lions because the personal foul was after the play was over. Oh. Late hit out, 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 out of, well, out of the, bounds. Well, the, the, the stick crew has me all screwed up. The guy with the first down <laughs> thing is on the other side of the field. Yeah. So we have a first and ten. So It's not been pretty, but we're moving the ball. Exactly, exactly. Lockhart gets a fresh set of downs and new life. 
So here we go, first and 10 at the 36. They're going to pitch it out to Aldana around the left side. Nice block by Noah Garcia. Aldana with a great run. Knocked out of bounds by number three. That's Javon Carver. It's going to be close to a first down. It is a first down. going to get out to the 25, yes. Another low court line first down. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. A minute 36 to go in the first quarter. This game is flying by, to be honest. Well, that's that Coach Herman uh, slot T formation. Chew up yards, chew up clock. We may not, if we do score a touchdown, it may not be on this end of the field. Time's running out. Tight formation, slot T. He's going to roll out right. He's going to throw it for Devin Clark. And Devin cannot come up with it, but I think they just intercepted the pass in the end zone. They did. They said they intercepted. That was number three, Javon Carver, who went up and intercepted the ball in the end zone. So interception number one for uh, Jaden Garza with 108 to go here in the first quarter. It's 7-0 Taylor, and Taylor takes a chance away from us on that possession right there. Very unfortunate for that interception to come down at a time like that. Um, like you said, one minute left in the first quarter. It was a good thrown ball, just a little bit underthrown, and Devin Clark had to go up for it and wasn't able to win the battle up at top. But Lockhart's offense showed some promise on by gaining some a good chunk of yardage on the Taylor defense. It's two receivers to the right, one to the left. Referees have blown their whistles for some reason. We'll see what's going on there. They're putting four more seconds on the clock. So 107 to go here in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, Taylor. Taylor has the ball first and 10 at their own 20. So again, two receivers to the right, one to the left. H back and a tail back. Shotgun formation, man in motion. He's going to give it to number four. That's Schneider. He gets around the left side. He's down to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, out to the 50 yard line. Great run by Schneider on the end around. And it looks like number five, Alex Thompson, makes the tackle. He saved a touchdown right there. Yeah, Alex Thompson had the angle on the runner right there, was able to catch up to him and knock and tackle him for a, before he was able to gain a huge, <laughs> a lot more yards. Taylor doesn't mess around. They snap the ball. They're going to throw. Harms is looking. He gets away from a sack, and he goes down on the second one. So it was number, and I can't, they turned around too quick. I didn't see who it was. 22, number Renteria. Renteria, George Renteria with the sack. So they lose two. It's going to be second and 12. Clock is running with 30 seconds to go. These guys do not mess around. They want to score a lot of points and do it quickly. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They have the H back. They have the tail back, which, by the way, that is Teeler. He's back in the game. Good to see him back in the game after getting that, taking that hard hit in the, at the start of the first quarter. Harms shotgun formation. He's looking to pass. He's got time. Now he's going to rush out of the pocket, and he's going to go forward. down. And that one, again, the guys aren't turning around to be helpful. 88, so here we go. Number 88, Chris Cadell, the senior defensive end, makes the sack. That'll great. make it a long ways. Yeah, great pressure from the outside lineman to put to flush the quarterback to step up. And uh, Chris Cadell was right there to knock him down. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. So they, it's the end of the first quarter. It's the Taylor Ducks 7, Lockhart Lions 0. We're going to go ahead and take a break here for a commercial. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports with Fight Freshman, Magazine. Isabel Rios. A broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your three-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy, or trade. Now you know. The best. Junior, Latavia Anderson. All right, we're back to Taylor, Texas, where they're getting ready to go. It is third and 20 from their own 40-yard line. Junior Both defenses Julia have played Lee. pretty Lee well, with the exception of that 50-yard bomb. So here we are, three receivers to the right, our left. Teeler in the backfield. Harms and shotgun. He's looking to pass. He's got time. 
He's still he's rolling out right. Great coverage in the backfield. He's going to run, and they're going to bring him down, but he gains about eight to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Continuing with the introductions, Junior Michaela McLawn. And he, I didn't see who made the tackle. Now that I'm looking, I want to say it was number 61. That looks like Sammy Yabara was in on the tackle. Senior so it'll bring up Franco. fourth down and 12 from the 48-yard line. And the punter that we've all been hearing about, the All-American, we saw him Senior, booming ball right before the game. We'll see what he does here. He's at his own 35-yard line. Villanueva. We got two guys back in the usuals. Cortland and Adam. It's going to go to Cortland. Cortland gets it on the run. He's out to the 20, the 25, to the 30. That's actually Aldonia to the 35, to the 40, to the 45. Aldonia with a great return. He caught that ball in stride and blew That's right by the first two defenders. He takes it out to the 45-yard line where we'll have it first and 10. Great catch and run by Aldonia as there was the, guy, the punter booted a high punt. There was a, a the gunner that was running down for Taylor was standing right next to him as he caught the ball. That's how high that ball went. And Aldania caught it and took off with some great blocks down the field. Great field possession for the Lockhart Lions at their own 45. And here we go again. Now we're coming to the line fast. Tight formation, slot T. Man in motion. Daquan Ellison to the left side, it's not going to get him anything. He got maybe a yard. I'll say right now that they're winning the line of scrimmage. They have beat us number on the line of scrimmage. Second, looks like they gave him credit for two yards, second and eight. 47-yard line of Lockhart. Number 29, that's Pavel Rivero. He is bringing in the, the play. It's been a low-scoring game tonight. Defense has played well. Again, tight formation. They're going to go to um, Noah around the left side. He might have picked up three more. He gets out. To, nope, they're going to mark it at the 49, so he got two more. Third and six. Gain of two on the play. It'll be third and six. So Lockhart right now is trying to figure out where is their weakness on their line. They haven't found it yet. They haven't found it yet. And, you know, give credit to uh, the coaching staff for the Taylor Ducks. They really did their homework against the Lockhart Lions slot T offense, and they're just filling in the gaps right now. So Devin Clark and Aldania are out to the right. They're going to go to the middle with Daquan, and he only gets about two. It looks like two. They're going to be across midfield where it will make it fourth and four. We have not really moved the ball real well without penalties so far tonight. So there's a reason why this 4A school has gone to uh, the state playoffs seven years in a row, looking for eight this season. And it looks like for the first time this season, we're going to be looking at the punt team for the Lockhart Lions, as last week they didn't even punt on, on either possession. Alfredo James is going to be the punter. And I do not, I cannot tell what the number is on the guy that's back. It looks like number 11, and if it is, it's Hugh. Now nah, that can't be a defensive end back there. There's no way that's a defensive end. And there's a penalty flag, so I'm guessing delay of game. It's number 12 penalty back there. Number the 12? Way. All right, so number 12, Ronak Nayak, wide receiver and a safety. But it's going to be a five-yard penalty against Lockhart, delay of game. They'll take it back to the 46 of Lockhart. Fourth down and nine now. Looks like uh, Nick will be, penalty, be at his own 25-yard line. From the we have line. yet to see James kick the ball as a punter, so we'll see it tonight. And he'll be kicking in the wind at that. It's not that big of a breeze, but it's a little bit breezy once he gets it up in the air. Snap is good. The punt is not very far whatsoever. It bounces for Lockhart. It's down to the 20, and that's where they'll down it. That'll be Devin Clark, it looks like, that downed it. No return on the So first and, three, first and 10 at their own 20. The we'll line. go ahead and take a quick break and for a commercial here. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network with KMAC Sports and Vite Magazine. Oh. 
with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Taylor, Texas. Twin, uh, twins to the left, single receiver to the right. It's going to be Teeler on the right side. He gets out about four yards on the carry. Remember, early in the game, Teeler was running the ball extremely well. That's his first carry since. It looks like he got five on the carry. Definitely. As I mentioned, it's good to see that he's back out there on the field after getting that hard hit off uh, from the Eddie Tukar, which, you know, on the hit, dislodged his helmet, but good to see that he's doing okay and he's back out in the game. So it's going to be two receivers to the left, one to the right, H back with a tail back. They're going to fake it to Teeler, throw it out to number two on the left side. Adam Romero played it perfectly. They were looking for Josh Blue, and Adam Romero was all over it. Great awareness by Adam Romero. He was there as quick. And that, and once again, that's the speed of the defense right there. So timeout, was it timeout? Something happened. Please nope. reset the game clock to 7 5 6, please. 7 5 6. Thank you. So, seven minutes, 56 seconds to go here in the second quarter. This game is going very fast. And they keep adding time to the clock. So, <laughs> that's how fast it's going. They so. Here we are in a team that likes to throw versus a team that likes to run. Triple receivers to the right. Single back to the left. They're going to fake the reverse. And this was a different – no, that was Harms. Harms ran it. He just faked the reverse. There's a fumble, but they're, I think they blew it dead. We'll see what happened. Nobody's signaling our way, so I believe they blew Harms dead. So it's going to be third and about – Three, no, fourth. That brings up fourth and about three. There is no fumble on the play. Player was down by contact. They'll bring up fourth so it looks like Aldana and uh, Romero are back to receive again. Great tackle on the play by Elijah Sanchez right there. So Another hard hit. Here comes that All-American punter again, Ryan Hansen. We'll see what he's got here kicking from about his own 13-yard line. High punt. Holy mackerel. Oh, he fumbled the ball. That's going to go that's going to go against us. He he kicks it so high that he misread it and they got the the ball and it looks like it was number 12 Ronick Nayak that came up with it. So it will be first and 10 in favor of Taylor, something you didn't want to see with 721 to go. Now, especially deep in Lockhart Terry there at their own 31. Taylor gets the fortune on the – gets the muff on the punt, and able to recover it first down to 10. Taylor at the 31-yard line in line territory. So they got two receivers to the left, one to the right, an H-back, Taylor at tailback. And right now, you know, it's just offensively we can't get anything going. And now we're starting to make some mistakes on special teams. We're really going to have to focus and get geared in here because this Taylor team is for real. Harms. Going to fake a pass, or the handoff. He's going to throw it deep. He's got a man, and it's intercepted. intercepted. It looks like Devin, Devin Clark, the 6'5 safety. Devin Clark from the basketball team picks it off at the 10-yard line. And, and I hate to sound like a broken Devin record, but Devin Clark was about 15 yards away from the receiver when the ball was thrown. And that speed, his height, was able to get up there right in front of the receiver as the ball was getting there and intercepted for the Lockhart Lions. Definitely a huge play with this Lockhart Lions defense needed, especially after the muff punt. They had just gotten off the field and had to come back. Huge play on the first play for, for Taylor to intercept the football and give the ball back to the Lockhart Lions. Might be deep in their own territory, but Lockhart gets the ball back. Well, and, you know, and Devin Clark at 6'5", he didn't have to take very many steps to get there. No. <laughs> and he got there quick. It was a great play, and he kept one foot in bounds. So here we are, tight formation, 10-yard line. Daquan Ellison up the left tight tackle, and he gets out there with a great run. A great run by Daquan Ellison. He'll get an eight-yard carry out of that. Second and two at the 18-yard line. It was the guy that we interviewed, Andres Hernandez, who led the way on the left side. Great run by Daquan Ellison once again. It's just picking his spot. 
Offensive line doing another great job. Here we go again. Daquan Ellison again. Around the left side, he's trying to get to the corner. He does. He breaks it out to the 30-yard line where he's diving head. Where did they mark him? 28-yard line. So the 28-yard line. Great run by Daquan Ellison. And we're moving the sticks, and hopefully we found our rhythm. 6.35 to go here in the first half. 7 to nothing, Taylor. Picks up 10 on the run. Daquan Ellison would look like he was getting ready to go up the middle. Saw an opening around the outside, bounced to the outside, and it was just a foot race past the first down marker all the way to the 28-yard line. So here we go again, tight formation. Immediately, Daquan Ellison up the middle. He is going to get about four, maybe five. He's out to about the 33-yard line. Again, two guys get into it after the fact, but no flags. And once again, Lockhart's going. They're giving a Taylor defense a heavy dose of Daquan Ellison. Right. Second and five. From the 33-yard line, the line just needs to keep doing what they're doing. Get control of this game. Take it over. So here we go, right around. Oh, it's up the middle. That's going to be Aldonia around the right side. He's to the 35. He cuts back and falls down. He tried to cut back and slipped. It looked like number 11 was there. That is Hugh Shelton. So I guess it is possibly a defensive end with the number 11. <laughs> Gain of two on the play. Third and three. Third and three from the 35. I'll tell you what, I like their PA guy's voice. <laughs> and we're right underneath the speaker right here, too. So. Yep. So it's third and three. They got Adam Romero split out left. They're going to give it to Daquan up the middle. He's only going to get about yard maybe two. It's going to be shy of a first down by yard at the 37 yard line. It looks like Victor Rivera was there to plug up the hole. Alex Estrada with the stop. Fourth and one. Gain of two on yes. the play. So what do we do? What do we do? It looks like we're going for it with 457. Wow. So 453. No, 450 and counting. Fourth and one at our own 39 yard line. This is a big play right here. They're going to hand it off to Quan. Oh, that is close. Very close to a first uh, down. Like gonna mark, the the sideline judge the side has it as a first right down. The, yeah, right around the 38-yard line. They gave it to him. First down. So he, Daquan Ellison, Herman rolls the, the dice on fourth and one, and he wins. Definitely rolls a huge dice because they, they were in their own – they're still on their own that side of the field as Lockhart you're listening to Lockhart Line Football Line first Country Broadcast Network. Lions are going left to right here in the second quarter. And a huge gamble that pays off for the Lockhart Lions. They, well, they feel like Daquan's getting at least two yards every crack and most a lot of times more than that. So they're going to go tight set again. They're going to fake it. They're going to roll out right with Jaden Garza. He's rolling. He's going to run. He jumps. And he gets out to about the 44-yard line. He tried to jump number 43. That was Jerron Carver. I don't think he was going to be successful jumping him, but at least he got a few more yards yeah. doing it. Definitely something I'm pretty sure Coach Herman is going to talk to him about. He goes, hey, young man, you're my starting quarterback. <laughs> we can't have you jumping like that. You know, great defensive play by the Taylor Ducks, who had the line receivers covered. So I'm not sure who called the timeout. I missed it. It looks like Taylor may have called the timeout. There's 4.04 to go. It's 7 to nothing. We'll take a commercial break right now. You're listening to the Lion Country Broadcast Network with KMAX Sports and Fightman. For over 15 years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. All right, we're back here at Taylor, Texas, where I'm just going to call it what it is. I've, I've got old age setting in on me. I usually stand up when I call the game. My right knee is starting to hurt. I may need some medic attention here. <laughs> Second down at the 44, oh. and there's a procedure call out of the gates. So we're moving backwards. On the play. Lockhart has got to dial in. Right now we got to get focused. We're hurting ourselves right now. 
Again, I'm not taking anything away from Taylor. Taylor is a good 4A football team. But they definitely are, they, they, and they've showed it on their first drive. And 10 for the Lions. We're the just line. making a lot of mistakes, man in motion. They're going to pitch it out to Aldonia around the left side. A nice block there. He's going, trying to string it, but he got strung out to about the 42, and now they're pushing him back. Um, it looked like number 42, Darius number Spruill, was out there to lead block, but the guy slipped off his block Stop and was able to string things out. Seven, so uh, second down and about seven. A long set. On the play, it'll be second and six from the 35. 335 to go here in the first from half. 32. Lockhart's going to have to get something going, not being a very heavy pass team. they got a long ways to go in three minutes and 30 seconds. Well, definitely. Great play by the defensive line for Taylor on that play. Instead of trying to force their way into the line, they stretched that, li that line of scrimmage to the sideline. And Aldonio, even though he has speed, he didn't have that much speed to get around the, the edge to gain more yardage. Timeout Lockhart. So Herman did not like what he saw. We're going to stay That's here. We're probably going to do a score update right now yes. with three minutes and 12 seconds to go here in the second quarter. It's 7-0 Taylor. And right now here is the Meitler Storage game break for the District 14 for a Right now Kennedy is taking on the Golden Bears at Kennedy. And it's halftime, 18-7. Kennedy up on top. Yavaldi with 9.23 left to go in the second quarter are behind the Win Mavericks 8-7. Out at Antler Stadium in a rival, rivalry game, Fredericksburg 14, Tyvee 12. Bernie Champion at Veterans Memorial with 11.23 left to go in the second quarter, 14-7 over Veterans. Bernie Champion 6, Medina Valley 7. Alamo Heights 19, United Longhorn 7. And uh, as of right now, there's no score for the Memorial Bur Burbank game. So I'm not sure. I'm getting some messages that people cannot hear the broadcast. There's a big run up the middle. to Quan Ellison. He's to the 40, down to the 30, down to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown to Quan Ellison. At least a 50-yard or 55-yard touchdown run by Daquan Ellison. 58 yards on that touchdown run by Daquan Ellison. Huge hole. We could have driven the band, could have marched right through that hole that the offensive line created. And, you know, great play right off the right out of the timeout for Coach Herman to call. And uh, Daquan, Daquan Ellison goes 58 yards untouched for the touchdown. So here we go. It looks like it's going to be Eduardo Ponce to kick the extra point. The snap is down, the kick is up, and it's good. Excellent. So we are now tied. With 3.03 remaining in the first half. So Taylor, seven. 3.03 to seven. go in the first or half, and Daquan Ellison went 58 yards to the house, and Eduardo Ponce, the junior kicker, kicks the extra point, making it seven to seven here. Now, Again, we're not sure if we're online. We're going to pretend that we are. We're still up. Okay, good. I've had several people posting on Facebook. They couldn't hear us, so that's why I was asking the question. We had some difficulties in the fourth quarter last week. We're going to blame that on uh, Emilio, even though, <laughs> e even though it was my fault, most likely. Um, Chuck Licata, um had had some advice for me, and I listened to him and brought something to plug our hotspot in. Anyways, it's 7-7 seven seven with 3.03 to go here in the first half. A great run by Daquan Ellison. That's, that got us a spark. Hopefully we can bounce on it now. Um, great run. The line opened a hole up, like Emilio said, that I could have gone through. Now, I wouldn't have been able to run as far as Daquan did without throwing up, but still, it was a great hole for us. So, for those of you that Maybe or maybe not, cannot hear us. Use Google Chrome. You might hear us on that. The ball's kicked off. It's taken at the 10, out to the 15, to the 20, 25, to the 30, out to the 32. Brought down by number 30. That is number Noah 19, Garcia. And it was the none other than Ronick Nyack, the senior. That is one good athlete right there. So they'll have it first and 10 at their own. Oh, they're going to mark it at the 31. 
And they're going to come out on that ball all over the field, most likely, with 2.58 to go. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. And we have another. We have a new running back. I don't see uh, Teeler in there. High snap. Handed off up the middle. The running back, i got to find out who he was. But he gains about two. And that's something I've seen from the Taylor offense. They've had a lot of high snaps so Number far. Nine, Jason Martinez. Jason the Martinez on the run. He gains two, second two and eight. Balls at the 33-yard line. From the 2.36 to go in the first half. Lockhart needs to be strong on defense, especially against the pass this late in the half. H back, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Man in motion. High snap again. Up the middle it goes. He gets a great run, and he's close to a first down. Again, Jason Martinez Number on the carry gets within a yard of the first down. The outs of the 40-yard line. Seven on the play. It'll be third and one. That last corn drive for the Lockhart Lions took all of four minutes, five seconds, nine plays, capped off by a 58-yard touchdown run by Daquan Ellison. Two receivers to the right, one to the left with an H back. They're going to hand it off the middle to Martinez. He gets stuffed in the middle. There's a flag. Two penalty he gets flags the first in. down, and I'm hoping that's Jason against Martinez them again where they threw Perry. the flags. There is a penalty on the play. It's kind of in the area where it's going to be called on them. We'll see what happens. So it's third and short. But there is a flag down. They did get enough for the first down. We'll just have to see what's going on. Chop block. Chop block. It's okay. moving back. It's a 15-yard variety. Third down. So it's going to be third and, let's see, third and almost about 16 yards maybe. Yeah, third and 16. Ball's at the 25-yard line. There's a minute 50 to go here in the first half. It'll be third and 16 for the Ducks from the 25-yard line. So it is uh, one, two receivers to the left, one to the right, H-back, and a tailback. He's going to throw. He's being rushed. He swings it out, and the rush was good as he tried to hit number two, Josh Blue, threw it way over his head. And it was and number, I think, 39 on that. Richard Moya, I believe, was the guy back there putting the pressure on. Just a sophomore, made a spectacular catch in the last game in the end zone. And there comes the punter. Fourth and 16, a minute 46 to go. They have nobody to receive this. He don't want to take another chance of a muff punt. So it'll be number 27, Ryan Hansen, the All-American. Oh, there's a timeout. Timeout is going to be against Taylor with 146 to go. But we will get to see All-American punter Ryan Hansen next time we come back. We're going to take a commercial break with 146. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Net Network. Payback Sports with Fight Marks. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and help. All right, we're back here in Taylor, Texas, and I'm trying to type to the Facebook people. So I'm telling them, try Google Chrome if you cannot hear us on a normal Internet network. So here's the All-American punter, number 27 senior, Ryan Hansen. He's standing at his own 11-yard line. He has had some nice punts tonight. Gets the snap. He just got some hang time on it. He's hoping for a bounce his way. It goes out of bounds. Not his best kick. It'll go out of bounds at the 37-yard line of punt. Lockhart. Well, they'll have first, first and, 10. and 10. So we'll and take that variety of punt from him. Yard line. 139 to go in the first half. It's all tied at 7. Taylor, Texas can play some defense. This team is good. For a 4A school, they can play football here. They hit hard, they move fast, 
They've got a great quarterback. They've got some good receivers and running back. Their line has done a good job. They've given Lockhart everything they've wanted tonight. Lockhart's just going to have to dial it in and get focused and move that line like they did last week. Adam Romero's going to check out to the left side, single receiver out there, man in motion. They're going to go around the corner with Garza. Garza's going to keep it, cuts up, out to the 45 Yard line, a great run. He gets about number eight one, on the Jayden carry. Jaden Garza brought down by number 10. Jaden Garza with a great read and took it himself. 123 and counting here in the first Second half. Two, seven to seven. They snap it again. They're trying to go up the middle. They were going to Aldonia, but he got nothing. He just got back to the line of scrimmage. Great read by the Taylor defense. Third and two. 24, Jesus. All Timeout, Lockhart. The no gain Timeout. on the play. Lockhart. So it is third and two. The ball is at the 45-yard 40, line of Lockhart. 109 to go. And uh, basically, uh, it's just been a defensive struggle here. Defensive struggle. We did a great job on them the last time. They punted the ball, and it was the worst punt their punter had all night, and it was still a good punt. But uh, it put us in, at the 37-yard line, and uh, we gained uh, eight yards on Garza on the first play of scrimmage. And then it was Aldonia who got nothing, got balled up by their great line on defense. Actually, I want to say it was number 72, Cooper Hansen, that stuffed him on that run. And one thing about Taylor's Field, this is beautiful. Their, their, their uh, arena where I'm guessing they lift weights and whatever, over here in the back end zone, it's a nice place. Ball's handed off up the middle, and I believe that extra surge may have gotten us the first down. Like they're going to get them right around the 47-yard line and a low car line first down. But who was? Oh, it's Daquan Ellison. It's first and 10 at the 47. We're going to keep on moving. Snaps the ball, spikes it, preserves some time. 58 seconds to go. It'll be second and 10 as Garza just snaps it to the ground real quick. I would have to think either Adam Romero – or Devin Clark on a possible pass play to end this half. But I don't think he wants to do that until it's the last play of the exactly, first half. Exactly, exactly. And on a side note on that 58-yard touchdown run by Daquan Ellison, put him over 100 yards for the night already. So here's Adam Romero to the right side. They're going to fake a handoff. Garza's going to have to cut it up the middle, and they read it perfectly. It was number 10 on the tackle. That is Stephen Lill. Great read by him. It's second. No, it's Number now one, third and Garza nine. They're going to hurry to the line. Rodriguez. Clock is moving. 40 seconds to go. Garza rolls. Five seconds to go. From the 36 yard line. Here comes Devin Clark. Yeah, first completed pass of the of the half for the Lockhart Lions. Great pass and great awareness by Aldonia to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Here they are to the line of scrimmage. Devin Clark is in the game. They're going to fake the handoff. They're going to, oh, they try to run, but they're going to roll out with Garza. He needs to just, he's going to throw it. He's going to throw it to Devin Clark. Interference. There's got to be, oh, my goodness. I cannot believe he did not get interference. He had a defender all over his there, back. The defender was on him when the ball was thrown and nothing. So incomplete pass. Still 25 seconds left to go in the in this and, first and half. And they're asking, why is there not a penalty? Yes. And, so there's a guy down there's for Taylor. Timeout on the field. That's the second time this year that Devin Clark has been hit before he caught the ball and no call. I wonder if it's because hey, he's 6'5". Let yeah. him go get it. <laughs> so And also we got 25 seconds left, and then uh, we're going to be listening to the Lockhart Line Roaring right. Band, and it will be the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop Halftime Show. So we're going to get a good – you're going to be able to get to listen to the Lockhart Line Roaring Band, and That's after right. that – We'll get into some. Uh, they got us with a shot block, so we're going to go 15 yards back. Yeah. That pretty much puts us out of the play yeah. right there. After the line band, we'll go into some commercials, and then uh, they hit up our sponsors, and then when we come back, we'll give you our thoughts of what went on through the first half and uh, what we expect to see in the second half. Well, it looks like it's going to be first and 25. Two receivers to the left. It'll be first and 25 for the Lions from the 49-yard line. Here's the snap. 
Hand off up the middle to Quan Ellison. Breaks free. He's to the 40, to the 40, 35, 30. He's going to break it. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Daquan Ellison. He breaks it again. The magic man. Daquan Ellison takes it to the house. It's just like a pass with Daquan Ellison. 16 <laughs> seconds to go, and Lockhart is now on top. Great run by Daquan Ellison. He was in trouble, scampered free, and took it to the house. I'm waiting for my man to my side to tell me how many yards. 51 yards on the run. So on two carries, he has 109 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> and here comes the big boy again, Eduardo Ponce, for the extra point. Here's the snap. He's going to fake it. There it goes. Oh, my gosh, Sosa takes it around the corner for two points. Sosa takes it. I don't know if that was a fake, a bad snap, what it was, but Alex Sosa took the ball, got up, ran around the left side, and he scores the two-point conversion. Yeah, and knowing Cole Charman, like I've talked, like we talked about at, at the kickoff, he wants to score going into halftime and then score coming out of halftime. That's why he defers the kick to get the receive at the second in the second half. The half. If you look at it, seven, instead of just going for the touchdown and an extra point, why not add a try for another point? He's going to get the ball to start the second half. And the way this offensive line is going, I mean, you got to give credit to the line to the line again. But that run right there, once Daquan Ellison got five yards past the line, it was all Daquan from there. That's right. And the thing was, Daquan was in trouble. It wasn't like the line gave him a big hole, but he made a guy miss, and he made another guy miss, and then there was nobody catching him after that. So we're going to have, it looks like it will be Jamez kicking off. Eventually we'll get, see, we're so used to Juan Acampo. we got to get used to these <laughs> new guys. So Alfredo Jaime is going to kick this off. Number nine, Jason Martinez. Jason, oh, it's a short kick, and it's going to go out of bounds, unfortunately. So they're going to get a good yard on this one. 16 so seconds to go in the first half. 15 to 7, Lockhart. What looked like, oh, my gosh. This 4A school might punch us right in the mouth, and we bounce back. This game's not over, but at least we've bounced back. Most definitely, and that's, this low-court line defense has stepped up since that opening drive for Taylor where they went down the field and scored on a, was, I believe it was a 58-yard touchdown pass. That's the only offense that they've been able to show is, this, is in that first drive. So this low-court line defense has stepped up, and once again, it's their speed that's helping them. The speed is what's keeping them in this game you know, as, as far as the defense-wise. As the offense, Daquan Ellison, with the help of them big linemen, with the, with the blocking of their big linemen, Daquan Ellison has been able to run all over this Taylor defense. He has 18 carries for 181 yards unofficially. Right, and we have what we're playing now is we've got two safeties 20 yards away from the line of scrimmage. Harms is the quarterback, and he's a good one. He's got a man in motion. He's going to fake the handoff, give it to uh, – oh, I'm, gone, I'm going brain dead on his name. Teeler up the middle. Teeler, a great Number running back. This Teeler is a lot like Daquan in the fact he's the patient. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think they're gonna, the that's going to be down. it. The clock is done. We're at halftime. It is – 15 to 7, your Lockhart Lions have come back on a 58 yard yes. touchdown Lockhart. run from Daquan Ellison and then a 51 yard touchdown run from Daquan Ellison. So we go to halftime. It's 15 to 7. Next up, your roaring band, the Lockhart Band, will be on. We'll put turn on the crowd yes. mic so you can listen and to it. And the halftime show is sponsored by, once again, is Johnny and Sons Peyton and Body Shop. And this is your halftime show as a Lion Roaring Bands. We're going to shut down our mics and turn up the crowd mic. So you get ready to rock and roll with the Rev and listen to some sweet sounds from the Roaring Band from Lockhart High School. Ladies and gentlemen, and now entering the field is the pride of Lockhart, the 2018 Roaring Lion Band. The UIL Sweepstakes award-winning Roaring Lion Band is led onto the field by drum majors Griselda Serrano and Tabitha Harris. Tonight, the Roaring Lion Band is proud to present parts one and two of its 2018 UIL contest show, The Sound of Color. 
featuring Paint It Black from the Rolling Stones, Mozart's Eine Kleine Nacht music, and Carol Britton Chambers' One of Many. With musical arrangements by Carol Britton Chambers, percussion by Colin Pagel, guard design by Jeffrey Sperling, and visual design by Luke Gall, we give you the sound of color.
really good job done. Not my favorite piece of music. Would not have been my choice for you. It's bright. It's not yellow. It is pretty pink. Please welcome to the field the 2018-2019 Lockhart High School Lionettes. Under the direction of Ms. Taylor Seymour, the Lionettes are led onto the field by Captain Alexia Bright, Co-Captain Elena Davila, Senior Lieutenant Precious Garcia, Junior Lieutenant Brianna Gonzalez, Social Officer Chelsea Rodriguez, Social Officer Bella Herman. This week, the Lionettes will be performing a kick routine to September.
And welcome back to the Johnny and Son Paint and Body Shop Halftime Show as your low court lines are leading 15 to 7 over the Taylor Ducks. As uh, it's a great night for football. Not a drop in the sky. Got plenty of plenty yeah. of clouds that came in before the game started, but it's nice and dark. Really great crowd here at Lockhart. Once again, Lockhart leading 15 yeah. to 7 over the Taylor Ducks. And we're going to go through a run of commercial breaks right now. Then when we come back, we will yeah, continue yeah, with the Johnny and Sons Paint Body Shop halftime show as we movement. as we give you our thoughts like, of the first half, kind of give you some stats from the first half, and give you what our thoughts for the second half of the Lockhart Lions to continue winning, to, to keep the pressure on the Taylor Ducks. And this is the Lockhart Line Broadcast Network, and you listen to Lockhart Line Football on KMAX Sports and Vite Magazine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Taylor High School proudly presents the 2018-2019 award-winning high school. First start with rewards checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain yes, said a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group is with you. And kind of one on one service that will follow the taillights of your pre owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. Johnny and Sons Pain Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Pain Body, we won't steer you wrong. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted Best Chiropractor and Best Chiropractor's Office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. For over 15 years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. And we are back here at Taylor Stadium, where is the Lockhart, your Lockhart line. Have a 15 to 7 lead over the hometown team of the Taylor Ducks. And what was an exciting first quarter, which went back and forth, where Taylor was the only team to score in that first quarter on a 58 yard pass. But since then, the Lockhart Line defense has, has gotten stronger, should I say, as the, games be, as the game went on. And I could say the same for the offensive line for the Lockhart Lions, who started off shaky on their first possession, but have really been able to create holes. Push these defensive linemen about four or five yards off the ball, which has allowed Daquan Ellison, who's been the man so far in this first half, he's totaled the ball 18 times for 181 yards and two touchdown runs, one of a 58-yard scamper and one off a 51-yard run. So, and then uh, you got the next leading rusher after that is uh, Jesus Aldana with eight carries and 34 yards, but. Right now, it's the Daquan Ellison show, and Scott, it's almost a repeat of last week here in the second quarter from what we've seen so far from this offensive line and the defense who gave up their first points of the season in the first half on the very first drive for Taylor. Well, coming into this game, I knew that uh, Taylor was going to be a tough team, but being a Class 4A team, I thought we'd still have you know, distance between us and them in the end, and we may still. But I have a feeling this could be a dogfight tonight. 
Taylor is a great football team. They've got a great punter kicker. they got a good quarterback, a good running back, and several good wide receivers, and a swarming speed of defense. But before I go into that, um, what I'm going to do is I've got my man. He's the eye spy from everywhere else. It seems like he knows everything about every other game that's going on with the Lockhart athletes. This one, his daughter actually plays for the volleyball team. Rudy Cadillo is giving me updates of the girls' volleyball against uh, Crockett, and they won the first set 25 to 9. So our volleyball team, even though Bastrop came to our house and beat us at home, it was a good, exciting game. The girls were flying everywhere, but they came up on a losing end against a very good volleyball team. And tonight, they put it to Crockett, 25-9 to in the first set. Coming back to the football thing, I've understood that several people are having trouble with hearing us, this and that, and it's coming in, it's coming out. I don't know if it's our new setup. I don't know what's going on. Last week in the fourth quarter, it was my fault. But, um, but this week, I think everything's going well. Our people, our QAs that listen to us, have not told us that we've been offline. So... I, if you don't hear us, it's, I, I feel like I'm talking to the wall here, but Google Chrome is what they're telling you to go to if you're having trouble hearing us. Go to Google Chrome. Now, again, things that Emilio touched on, this football team has given up 14 points. One was um, us sacking, getting sacked and fumbling the football, and someone ran it 76 yards for a touchdown, and then they had a nice 55, 58-yard bomb, or 55-yard bomb in the first half from a great quarterback to a wide-open receiver. Other than that, our defense has been flawless. They've played really, really well. Uh, Devin Clark with a huge interception to stop a drive, which looked real scary there, and kind of turned the swing of the game, to be honest, because later Daquan went to the house. So anyways, that's my uh, asset, my thought, and then I'm going to turn it right back over to uh, Emilio and let him give you some more. Yes, definitely. And you said the turning point really for the Lockhart Lions was that interception by Devin Clark. His, actually, his first interception, you know, and he's a senior. And, you know, it's great things that we're seeing from Devin Clark. And we saw the speed. Like I mentioned, he was 15 yards away from the receiver when the ball was thrown. His speed was able to get him there and get in front of that receiver and make the interception. But that's the big turning point that we can look at for tonight's ball game. Because right before that, right before that interception, Lockhart had muffed the punt, and Taylor had recovered it deep in Lockhart territory. And on the very next play, Devin Clark gets the interception. Lions get the ball back. Daquan Ellison scampers down the field for a 58-yard touchdown run, and boom, we're right in this game. Lockhart gets the ball back right after a bad punt, which went about 60 yards for the, for, for the duck punter. But, you know, it was a bad punt with seconds left to go in the first half. Daquan Ellison busts through a huge hole, spins around a couple of blocks, and scampers down the field for another 51-yard touchdown run. And instead of going for the extra point, there was a trickery done by Coach Herman to get the two-point conversion, where it brings us to where we're at now, 15-7, to your Lockhart Lions leading over the Taylor Ducks. It's, 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 it's been exciting, an exciting ball game to say, and uh, I expect to see more fireworks coming from the Lockhart Lions offense and defense as it seems like they figured out that passing of the quarterback and uh, they've done an outstanding job. Like I said, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, uh, stats that I've already put out. Daquan Ellison's a leading rusher with 18 rushes for 181 yards, two touchdowns. As a team, Lockhart has 31 rushes, 225 yards on the ground, and two touchdowns. Of course, uh, Jaden Garza is one for two and for passing. One completion for 13 yards to Jesus Aldana and uh, had one one pass that was intercepted early in the first quarter. But since then, Lockhart's been clicking on all cylinders once again, and I'm excited to see what this third or fourth quarter is going to be bringing for the Lockhart Lion fans. So just some things we've done in the past. I'm going to go through some real quick. We didn't do much last week because, again, we're all new getting at this. But I wanted to give some shout-outs. Um, first of all, before I give the shout-outs, though, let's see here. 18-2 to Lockhart in volleyball in the second set. Abby Ruggio has scored 15 points off her serve. Wow. 
So Abby Ruggio, who's one of the best players on that team, and trust me, this team is very talented. I tell you what, she keeps getting points. We're going to name her Offensive Player of the Game for exactly. the Exactly. <laughs> but you have Abby Ruggio showing them up there, 15 serve points in an 18-2 score. Now, shout-outs. Sophia Sosa, her son, picked up the, and again, whether planned, whether, oh, my gosh, we got to do something, Alex Sosa. Yes, he's a linebacker. Yes, he's a stocky kid, but he moves well. He took that snap. It looked good to me. I think it was planned. Yes. And he rolled out to the left side, and he scored the two-point conversion. I want to give her a shout-out because she follows us all the time on Facebook. No, I'm not talking to Jame Guerrera, the player, but I'm talking to his dad on Facebook. They're here. They're watching. I want to give a shout-out to them. Of course, my mom and dad. In San Marcos, Clarence and Roberta Smith and their two mangy dogs are <laughs> sitting here listening to the game tonight. My wife, Vanessa, back in Lockhart, enjoying a day off from work or an evening off from work. Yes. Those are my shout-outs from folks that I've heard from tonight. Again, we hope you can hear us and, and, and hear us well. Uh, a few people have chimed in saying we're cutting in and out. So everybody in our QA side says we're on. So that's what we're playing like. We're on the air. Yes. Um, great first half. We started a little slow, a little shaky. But that's good for us because you've got to have tough games to know how to come back. you got to have tough games to know how to pull out a win. I'm just hoping that we'll click on all cylinders like uh, Emilio said and we'll get a little bit of a distance between us and these guys. Yes, definitely. And it's going to be a huge momentum swing should Lockhart take this opening kickoff to start the second half and go down the field and put some more points on the board, where there's three points, seven points, eight points. That's going to be a huge, huge momentum swing right there <coughs> for the Lions to, you know, to, to add to the eight points that they got at the end of the first half. Then you add some more points to start that off in the second half. That's a huge swing where they were down 7-0 going into the second quarter and now find themselves 15-7 here at halftime. And as Scott was giving shout-outs, I'd like to give a shout-out to my wife, who's probably listening at Walmart, at Walgreens where she's working at, which she ain't supposed to. But she ha I'm pretty sure she has her phone on and listening to us. And uh, I want to give a shout-out also to my mom. So, hi, Mom. If, I w if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, and I know she's back in Lockhart listening as well. And, uh, of course, I want to give a shout-out. You know, I can't say er everybody's name, but I want to give a shout-out to everybody who's tuning in from wherever, whatever living room, establishment, bedroom, in your car, wherever you're at, and you're tuned in to Line Country Broadcast Network, I want to give you a shout-out and thank you so much for tuning in to listening to us tonight. And a special shout-out to every single sponsor that we have for Line Country Broadcast Network because if it wasn't for those sponsors, McKelty wouldn't, be having, wouldn't have us on air and giving us all the all the all the fans that we have, and uh, for Friday nights. And speaking of McKelty, I'm gonna pass the mic to her so she could give her thoughts and give a shout out of her own. Uh, I just want to shout out my friends because they're very supportive. I shout out my mom; she likes when I come do this. I like to do this too. Well, we, I tell you what, McKelty, again, I brag about you all the time. She is fantastic. One of our other people, A.J. Acosta, doesn't do football because he's a superstar. And he's, as he told me in front of a lot of the girls in the band, he's the reason the band is so good. And I love A.J. Acosta. I wish he was with us. He's got that dry sense of humor and that really nice car. But we miss A.J., but it's good that we know he'll be back with us when basketball and soccer and all that rolls around. But he's another one. These two kids, they do a great job because I couldn't do what they do and uh, without these two. So, McKelty's mama, she's doing a great job, and you need to be very proud because she's got a very important job. We're about a minute and five before the second half starts. We're going to go back to some of our sponsors and uh, get some of that going. And even the sponsors that we don't have commercials for, we'll have Emilio kind of voice them out here in just a second when we get back. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMX Sports with Fight Magazine. 
For over 15 years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. And we are back here at Taylor Stadium to continue with the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop paint and body shop halftime show we're getting ready set to kick off for the second half want to give you a quick Meitler storage game break of district scores of scores around the district Kennedy Rockets 18 to 16 348 left to go in the third quarter over the Golden Bears Uvalde at the beginning of the third quarter is 14 to 8 over Win Mavericks Fredericksburg is losing at halftime to Tyvee 36 21 Bernie Champion and veteran Memorial Patriots are tied at 21 at halftime. Memorial is losing 3 to nothing over Burbank. Bernie Greyhounds down by one and at Medina Valley, and they're in a rain delay right now. And Alamo Heights is leading 25 to 14 against the United Longhorns. And here at Taylor, Texas, is your Lockhart Lions 15 and Taylor Duck 7 as we get set to kick off the second half. And I'll pass it over to Scott Smith as he's ready to do the play-by-play, -play, and you're listening to Lockhart Line Football on KMAC Sports. Well, we're getting ready to start with the All-American kicker, Hanson. Just a real quick shout-out, the Lady Lions win 25-7 to second, seven in Game 2. So 25-9, to 25-7 to seven in Game 2. Cortland Zambrano receives the kick in the back of the end zone, and this kid can kick flat kick. He's amazing. Cortland did his job, though. Caught the ball, downed it. We're going to get the ball at the 25-yard line to start yes. the second half. And great job. He called for a fair catch. And, you know, it was good to see that he was disciplined enough to catch the ball and stay in the end zone instead of bringing it out. As we saw at, uh, Taylor a couple, I mean, uh, with Travis a couple of times last week, that didn't work for him. So, so here we great, go. To start, great choice. Starting the second half. Uh, First and 10 at the 25-yard line, 15-7. to seven. The Lockhart Lions are on top. It started out a little slow and a little scary, and now we're doing things. We've got two receivers to the left, Aldania and Moreno. Garza under center. Ball's handed to Quan Ellison up the middle. He breaks through. He's out to the 30 to the 36. No, he's a little short of the 36. It's going to be the 39, 35. So it looks like he may have gotten a first down. Brought down by number 10, Stephen. And he Hill. did. So a 10 yard run, as in Daquan Ellison is just chewing up the yards here in this game. Quick run for 10 yards for Daquan Ellison, and looks like they're going to just keep riding Daquan until they can stop him. Kevin Lampkin brings in the play. 11.35 to go here in this third quarter. Tight formation for Lockhart. Line looking pretty good so far. They're going to fake the handoff, pitch it out to Adanya around the right side. Here he goes to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45. He's brought down at the 44-yard line. And guess who was in front of him blocking? And I was just about to say, <laughs> Noah Garcia, the sophomore that's built like a man-child, leading the way. What a run by Adanya. Great blocking by Garcia. And not just that, a sophomore at that leading the way and. God, uh, Aldania just ran right behind him until he just had to run past him because after uh, uh, Noah made that block, he was already looking for somebody else to block. Oh, yeah. And that was that's great, great from the sophomore. So first and ten, two carries, two first downs. They're going to go with – 
The ball up the middle. It's Daquan Ellison to the Once 30, again. to the 20, to the 10. Daquan Ellison goes to the house. A 44-yard touchdown run. Daquan Ellison. Why, you don't need to throw when you got Daquan. Oh, you don't have to. And Daquan is just racking up his totals. And it's that's just his first first carry. Actually, second carry of the second half. Picks up 10 yards on his first carry. Then quickly scoops up another 43-yard touchdown, his third of the day. I, I, I don't think there's not going to be any question on who the player of the game is going to be. Yeah, it's going to be tough to beat that. Most definitely. Uh, here comes Sosa. holding the He'll hold the ball. And this time it was James who kicks it, and it's good. So with that, Lockhart leads 22-7 to over the Taylor Ducks off of a 43-yard touchdown run. Lockhart takes one minute and 15 seconds off the clock, runs three plays, but finds pay dirt on the third play with Daquan punching it in the end zone for his third touchdown. And check out this stat, 20 carries for Daquan Ellison, 234 yards unofficially on the night, and we still got a little less than two quarters left to play. That's right. It, it's been actually kind of scary, to be honest. It is. <laughs> Because in, like my the the kid that works for me, at work who used to, who played against us, he said I hate the slot T. You never know who's going to get the ball. I didn't see Daquan with the ball. I thought they came around the side with it, and I noticed. Wait, that kid doesn't have the ball. So I looked in the middle of the field, and there's Daquan busting it up the middle. So I tell you what, Daquan's having a game. He definitely is, and you know, give credit to the offensive line, but. Just as we did, said on his second touchdown, the line helped him get the first five yards. He helped himself get the rest. And this line is starting to push their way around in that Taylor defensive front line. So there's Hame with a bad kick. He shook his head. They pick it up at the 20. They're out to the 25 to the 30. Nice tackle there by number 27, Julian Rodriguez. I see what it was right there. Looked like he was trying to kick it right at one of the upfront men of the Taylor Ducks as they turned to run away. Oh, it looked like he was trying ah. to ricochet off a player, first you know, we, almost like a modified onside We kick. actually did that last year against a team. Yeah. So they'll have first and 10 at their own 30. Again, not taking anything away from Taylor. It's 22-7, to 7, 10-41 to go here in the third quarter. But this uh, Cole Harms, great quarterback, gets another high snap, swings it out quickly, hits his man. He's out to the 30 to 35, out to the 40, brought down at the 44-yard line. That was Michael Devin Snyder. Clark, that and I believe it was also Third Aiden down. Hernandez in on the tackle. It's a first and 10. They'll keep it moving. They like this quick pitch and go. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, an H-back and a tailback. Harms gets it. Another high snap. Gives it to Teeler. Teeler up the middle, and they're back to running the football just like they were in the first quarter. Number Another first Teeler down. Teeler with, with a great that run. He picks up 10. Duck, two down. plays, two first downs, but once again, first I'm noticing high snaps from the center to the quarterback. They're Might at be something that's going to haunt them later on in the game. They're at the 46-yard line of Lockhart. Same formation. He's looking to throw again. Hits. Oh, he overthrows it that time. He had people in his face. He was uh, had Faustino Gonzalez right in his face as he was throwing. Aiden Hernandez with great coverage on that slot on that swing man coming out. And then uh, it was uh, intended for Schneider, but it went over his head. So it's going to be second and ten. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They'll have that H back, and they'll have Teeler in the back. Shotgun formation, man in motion. It's a handoff, a reverse around the side. He breaks free, he's to the 40, to the 35, down to the 30, down to the 25, inside the 25. A great run by Schneider. He gets it down to the 23, first Adam, and 10. Adam Romero able to jump on his back and ride him for a few yards and tried stripping the ball at the same time. First and 10. First and 10. finally able to get him down at the 24. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, a high snap again. Teela with it. He gets hit in the backfield. He's going nowhere. A loss there. He, it was led by Sanchez, also by number 75, Faustino Gonzalez there. And once again, another high snap, which gave the Lockhart Lions defense that extra step to get into the backfield and stop uh, Teeler from uh, gaining any yardage. Martinez comes in for Teeler. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Still have their H back. 
Shotgun formation. It's handed off to Martinez on the right side. He cuts it up. Nice run. He's going to pick up about seven, maybe eight. Brought down there by Number Eddie Tucar. Jason Martinez with the carry. So it is second and about, no, third and five it looks like. Taylor went in there, the got pinball around pretty good before he was finally tackled. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They're going to throw it. They hit the man. He gets to the 15. He's short of the first down. He was brought down by Adam Romero. Four, Devin Michael Clark Schneider. helped finish him off. Great That's tackle by Adam Romero. Yeah, great yeah. tackle by Devin uh, by Adam Romero. He fell down and was still be still able to make the It'll tackle from pretty much his backside. Schneider was the one that made the catch. He liked Schneider. Yard line. So it's fourth and one. Big play two, coming up two for receivers, the Lions defense. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. H back shotgun. There goes Martinez. They're gonna, He's they're oh. gonna stuff him. He does, I don't know, that extra effort may have gotten the first down. It's going to be very, yep, he got it. The extra effort, we had him strung out, but we let him dive, and he got the first down. It is now first and 10 from the 13-yard line. They're moving the ball well. Great job by that young man to bounce around the outside where he looked like he was going to lose some yardage, was able to get enough in positive yardage and enough for another first down for the Taylor Ducks. So Martinez picks up the first down. Teeler checks back into the game. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Single back in the backfield. They're looking to blitz. Here's a handoff to Teeler. He spins. He gets hit in the backfield. And that's the big guy, number 72 in there, Isaiah number Samparia. Jason Teeler with the carry. Or Samaripa, I am yeah, so Samaripa, sorry. Samaripa, yes. Samaripa, he was in there before the ball, boy even it's touched the ball to hand off. Definitely, and, you know, it, and he just 14. got in there right in between the, the gaps and muscled his way right through that offensive line to make the line. tackle. Samaripa is a big, strong kid. 7.25 to go here in the third quarter. 22-7, to seven, but they're moving the ball. Man in motion. They're going to give it to him again. He pitches to the right, up to the middle. Nice tackle. going to get hit hard. He did get hit hard, and I want to say it might have been two car that got him. Gain of two on the play. Sanchez Number is four, in there. Schneider. Be third and 12 from the 15-yard No, line. actually it was not. It was your little baseball player. Richard Moya, the man to make the hit. 6.55 to go. Third quarter, 22-7. to seven. Three receivers to the left. One, rat, one, one guy in the backfield, that's Teeler. Harms the quarterback in shotgun formation. They're looking to blitz again, and I think There's we got false start. False start on the offense. On the that play. definitely helps. Because right now, this kicker is in field goal range, but honestly, I don't know that I'd be kicking in this situation. Right. Actually, he's in field goal range from the sidelines wherever he's standing. Yes, in. that is true. <laughs> but... Definitely, it, it's a huge, huge setback for the Taylor offense right now to get a penalty. I mean, they were already uh, third down and 12. Now they're looking at third down at 17. Third and 17, three receivers to the left. Single back is Taylor. It'll be third and 17. Harms is the quarterback in shotgun formation. No blitz this time. He's looking. He's got time over the middle. He's got his man and overthrows him. Definitely great coverage by the Lockhart Lions defense. Passes. Devin Clark. Incomplete intended for number 14. Santiago yep, Devin Estrada. Clark, the man, the, your basketball guy right there. The like I said, there's guys in this court, uh, on this field that I coach in fall ball, which I'll will start next, this coming Wednesday. And uh, these guys are great athletes. Devin Clark can jump, and he's fast. Here come, they're going to kick. So it's going to be a 37, no, yeah, 37-yard 37 37 field goal. The guy does not have his mouthpiece in. That should be a penalty. At least it is in Kansas. The kick is on the way, and that's easily good. Oh. Now, he could have made that from 50. Is good. There is a flag, and I'm thinking it's because of the mouthpiece. We'll have to see. Maybe it was on us. I don't know. Yeah, I, I honestly think that it, if you don't have your mouthpiece in, it's a flag. And the holder did not have his mouthpiece in, but we'll see. Nope, it's good. Runner into the kicker. Defense. So they're going to call the running guy. into the kicker. Field goal's good. Field, the, uh, the field goal's good is 22 to 10. Right. And the With thing is, the running into the kicker doesn't hurt quarter. the lines that much Fuller, because it 10. was fourth Lockhart, down at 17. 22. 
Now, running and a kicker only get, is it's only a five yard penalty. So Taylor either had to either take the points or try, you know, or try to kick the ball again with the five yard penalty. Now, had it been a personal foul, roughing the kicker, then they would have gotten a 15 yard penalty plus the first down. And Taylor would have would have had the ball back, but as it is, it's just running into the kicker, five yard penalty, or take the points off the board. And Taylor, this the Taylor head coach decided, you know what, we'll take the points, and let's kick off. So he'll be kicking off from the 40 yard line, which means there probably will be no return on this. As you're listening to the Taylor's going, Taylor Ducks are going from right to left, and Lockhart's going left to right. And as the wind blows, it's going from right to left. So it's in the back of Taylor, Taylor's backs Ryan right now. The wind is at their the backs. So he'll kick off from the usual spot at the 40-yard line. Nice kick. High kick. Cortland, Fair call. Cortland Zambrano Fair just let it go over his head, which is a good idea. Yes, wise choice. He had called fair catch for it as well, too. But uh, it's always, if it's over your head and you're in the end zone, chances are just let it go. And great awareness by that young man. And... Uh, be a touchback for the Lockhart Lions with 6.32 left to go in the third quarter. Lions will have the ball on their own 25-yard line. And so I haven't heard from Rudy Cadillo here in a little while, but as last I knew, the girls had won two sets. It'll be first and 10 for Lockhart at their own 25-yard line. We'll see if Daquan Ellison can work any more magic here. Tight set, slot T. They're going to give it to Aldana. Aldana around to the 35, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40, to the 35, 30, 25, 20, 10. Oh, he gets tripped up. What a di uh, diving tackle there. Tripped up at the 10-yard line. I cannot see the kid's number. number. It looked like it was Josh Blue that tripped him up, but he takes it all the way to the 10-yard line around the left side. Great run. Huge pickup for the Lockhart Lions on that as Aldania breaks open from around the outside and heads to the so far sideline for, for a huge gain line. for the Lockhart Lions. So we'll, we're coming back here. It's first and 10. No, it's first and goal from the 10. Now Aldania's got to be getting close to 100 again because he had 100 last game. Two receivers to the right. Guards of the quarterback. Hands it off to Daquan Ellison around the left side. He stumbles. But not before he picks up a couple. Looks like he got down to about the eight-yard line. Yeah, the eight-yard line. Second a goal from the eight. And with that 65-yard run, Jesus Aldana with 10 carries surpasses the 100-yard mark. For the second week in a row, both Daquan Ellison and Jesus Aldana reached the 100-yard plateau. It as Aldania has 107 yards on 10 carries. And Aldania needs to take uh, Noah Garcia out for dinner. <laughs> There's a handoff straight up the middle. He's coming around the left side. And I did not see who got it. I want to say it was Noah, but I can't tell. All that trickery. 24, Jesus Aldana. Nope, Aldania with it. He gets it down to the five-yard line where it'll be third and goal from the field. five, but someone is down injured. And that was Aldania, but he's taking himself out. And I'm going to say he got hit somewhere the guys don't really like. Because <laughs> he's gimping off, but he's fine. 5.04 to go here in the third quarter, 22-10 Lockhart. Knocking on the door. Uh, they have it second and goal at the five. I thought it was third and goal. It'll be third and goal. That's what and I definitely, thought. This is four down territory third for the Lockhart Lions. Daquan Ellison around the right side. He's got the corner, and he's got another touchdown. And for number four, five, with 4.53 to go in the third quarter. Ellison in for his third touchdown. Ellison caps off his drive with a five-yard touchdown run. But that run was made possible by a 65-yard scamper from Jesus Aldana. Lockhart Lions take a minute and a half off the clock and run four plays to get into the end zone to take the lead 28 to 10, awaiting the extra try. So, so with the hold, the kick is up by James, and it's good as he hits it. Alfredo James hits the second extra point of the night, making it 
29 to 10. Taylor 10, Lockhart 29. And Scott, I, I hate, just like last week, Lockhart Lions offensive line keep grinding and keep grinding and tiring out this defensive line that they face these last two weeks so far. And, you know, on, on a team that Coach Herman likes to run the slot T, that likes to chew up yards and chew clock up, right now they're chewing up yards. These last two drives that they've had have been no more than a minute, a minute and a half each. But they've capped off each drive with a touchdown. So if you want to be in a shootout in this game, having plays like this, it's going to work. But I'm pretty sure Coach Herman is going to know that as soon as he step, we step up into district, games are going to start getting tougher and tougher. But this line's offense and defense Jason just keep Martinez, getting stronger and stronger as the games continue so far. And what we've seen the last two weeks, that's going to be very exciting for, for when we get into district play in two weeks. Well, Rudy Cadillo just sent me a message. The Lady Lions win the third match 25 to 11. They win the contest tonight. Great job to our Lady Lions. Another squib kick by James. And number seven will fall on it. That is Reese Gensler. And that two, kick Josh did bounce Wooden. off the back of one of the Tyler Ducks up front men. So here again, we're at 29 to 10, 452 to go. It's just the third quarter. I was thinking we might be able to score about 46 points tonight. I don't know if we'll get there, but I think we might get close if the line keeps doing what they're doing right now. And here comes Taylor. They waste no time. Two receivers to the right, one to the left with their H back, and it looks like Martinez is the running back now. He's back there with Harms. Harms, uh, Martinez to the left side. He bounces out, but Alex Sosa there to make the play. And Martinez goes down hurt. Number nine, Jason Also, Martinez. there's uh, Renteria. George Renteria was there to make the initial contact, and Alex Sosa was there to clean it up. There's but uh, an you know, on once again, field. another very hard tackle from the Lockhart Lions defense. Unfortunately, the, the running back got hurt on the play, but it just goes to the physicality that this Lockhart Lions defense, or should I say this young Lockhart Lions defense is bringing here on Friday nights. It's, they're very physical. They're very, very physical defense. All right, well, let's take a break here. We'll get us a commercial. Let First Lockhart National let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. For over 15 years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. All right, we're back here at Taylor, Texas. 29 to 10, Lockhart on top with 4.43 to go here in the third quarter. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. H back in front. Teeler in the backfield, high snap, Teeler with the ball, and Sanchez grabs him and stuffs him right there, and then he has the rest of the line jump all over him. And once again, another high snap from the center to the quarterback. You know, people say, oh, it's a high snap. Yeah, that's about half a second of extra time the quarterback has to take, and that half a second, when you talk about a young, fast Lions defensive team, that half a second will get you about three, four yards into the backfield, and it showed right there on this last play. That is correct, and right now they're calling plays from the sidelines with a scoreboard or a card. There's one receiver to the right, two to the left, still have the H back. Hearns is in the game, or Teeler, I'm sorry. Teeler's in the game for Martinez right now. He drops back, he's looking, he's got time. He's going deep over the middle. He hits the man, but he drops it. Great defensive play by number nine, Caleb, Caleb Jennings. Jennings. Caleb Jennings, the junior, another basketball player, but he's more of a football player, does a great job there. Definitely. If you notice on that play, Caleb Jennings didn't jump right at the ball. He allowed the receiver to touch the ball, reached around, and it was just perfect timing. He reached around there and knocked the ball right out of the receiver's hands. Third and ten. There. Why is the guy back to punt? 
unless the guy on the side, it's fourth and 10. The guy on the sideline's not keeping up with the downs. Fourth and 10, they will punt. Nobody is deep. Let's see what he does on the punt this time. A booming, booming punt. It lands at the 25 and is rolling. Oh, good gosh. What a punt. What a it rolls punt. out of bounds at the seven-yard line. No return on the punt. Holy cow. First and 10 for the Lions. I am from glad. From the point of impact, that ball traveled 73 yards. I am glad I'm watching this kid from Taylor, Texas. This kid is amazing. Hey, you know what's amazing? You you Teresa take the net Garza. punt, the net Teresa punt. You take 15 Garza. yards from where he Please stood at. That's that's what 59 Teresa yards on the punt, 50, 50, 60 yards on the punt. Box. Well, coming we into this game, I read box. Ryan Hansen, kicker, punter, All-American, and I thought, how do they come up with that? And it was the Coles All-American. This kid is worth it. Like I said, Saturdays, this kid's a give me. Not only as a kicker, but as a punter, he'll be playing on Sundays if he keeps First crafting his the deal Lions. there. They're going to go around the left side, all bundled up. I can't even tell who has the ball. And it looks Look like Jesus Aldana. It looks like Aldana. Yep, Aldana had it. He got jumbled up there on the left side. It looks like they lost two on the carry. Or no, they'll gain two. So second two from, or second and nine. I'll get this right. Second and eight from the nine. Second and eight from the nine. (laughs) Too many low numbers here. But that punt, I'm just, I think I'm blown away by that That, punt. Exactly. and I mean, I wish the people that are listening could actually see the punt carry, and it's it's an amazing sight. So they're going to go up the middle it's the same old same old Daquan Ellison getting another first down as he jumps out to the 18 yard line what's killing me right now is this offense is hard for me to keep straight because they do such a great job with the fakes they carry out their fakes you really can't tell who has the ball until somebody breaks free Garza doing a great job at quarterback this year. He's just a junior. Yes, definitely. You know, they say slot T quarterback. All he got to do is hand it off, but it's the way you hand it off, and he's been able to be a little trickery with it. They're going to give it up the middle there. He's got a nice run running right up the middle. That's our boy Noah. Noah with a nice hard run up the middle. and I, Oh, there's a flag. I hope that's not on us, but I have a, I have a feeling Mr. Daquan Ellison may have said something. And it looked like he was following, if I, yep, Hami Guerrera. That's who he was following on that carry. So we're going to sort out, it's on us. Somebody had to have said something, which we don't need because we've already got bad field position. After the play, dead ball. Oh, they called it Andreas Hernandez. I saw, I saw Daquan throw his hands in the air. I thought maybe he thought they got him. So it was Andreas that actually uh, got the call. So they're going to back us up big time here. Well, good thing it's only half the distance to the goal line. So it, it still pushes us back, but it's, uh, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing, especially when we're deep in our own territory. I guess if Daquan breaks another one, it's going to give him more yards. They got Devin Clark, the 6'5 guy, out on the right side. They're going to Garza. Oh, it's a broken play. Garza's just got to eat it and run it. He gains about a yard, so it's going to be third and long. It was a broken play. Somebody messed something up. 140 and counting here in the third quarter. 29 to 10, Lockhart. The wheels have fallen off here the last minute and a half. Because everything was rolling great. Ooh, and Garza's limping. But he he's he's bouncing it off. The three-yard gain on the play. Yeah, definitely a miscue in the backfield. There was a miscommunication, and it looks like they were trying to go with Aldana around the far edge. But somewhere in the, in the, in the backfield, there was a mix-up. Makes it third and long for the Lions. They faked themselves out. So a tight formation with your slot T. He's going to hand it off up the middle, and there is absolutely nothing there. And that was Adanya with the run. So it'll be fourth and about 13. Here comes the punt team. Fourth and 12 for the Lions from the 15-yard line. And it looks like, 
I want to say that's the guy, number 12, Ronak Nayak, receiving the punt. He is a great athlete. He's at his own, no, he's at the Lockhart 48. And we have Alfredo James punting right, the he, ball. He's punting into the wind as well also. There's the snap. It's a good snap. By the way. There's the punt. It's going to hit the ground and roll. It's to the 50, to the 45. And Eddie Tukar will down it at the 43-yard line where the Taylor snapper. will start. <laughs> the snapper downs the ball. He's not a good athlete, is he? You bend over, you snap a perfect yeah, snap, and, and then, then you, you down every, the ball. You beat everybody, you almost beat the football down the field. Yeah, it's what like I said, Eddie Tukar, I think, has been starting the linebacker for varsity since about sixth grade. I'm not real sure. Someone will have to get the information on that, but I know he's been starting for a long time. <laughs> so here they go. Sec uh, two receivers to the left, one to the right, the H back. Teeler in the backfield. Harms with it. Hands off to Teeler. No, he fakes it. Nice fake. Throws it out there to Schneider. Schneider across the 50 to the 45, down to the 40. He dives ahead to about the 34-yard line. First and 10. Taylor's not giving up. And that should end the third quarter unless they get this snap off quickly. Looks like they're going to try and get at least one more playoff, and they're not going to do it. And they do not. So that will end your third quarter. So at the end of three, it's Lockhart 29, Taylor 10, we're going to take a commercial break. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Johnny & Sons Pain and Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny & Sons, 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny & Sons Pain and Body, we won't steer you wrong. And we are back to start the fourth quarter. Uh, be prepared because after the game, you listen, you're going to listen to the first Lockhart National Bank post-game show. And there they go up the middle with it already. Here I was trying it's to answer. It's a fumble, and Lockhart will pick it up. I'm glad. I'm going to mark them down. With the carry. I'm glad that uh, Emilio was watching because I was answering somebody on Facebook because they can't hear us, so I'm telling them what the score was, and they ran a play. So I guess they'll keep the ball with them. Second down and two. I'm guessing it was Teeler on the run. There's a, the end around again. Schneider spins, hit hits, hard. hit hard. Was that two car? Yep. And it was also number 75, Seth, or no, check that. Number Faustino four, Gonzalez making his presence known yes. on defense tonight. And once again, stay tuned after the game for the first Lockhart National Bank postgame show where we'll bring you the Chuck Nash Offensive Number Player of the Game and the Farm three, Bureau Defensive Player of the Game. It's per legal procedure. So it was third and three, but the left tackle jumped off sides. They're going to move them back. Taylor is starting to get a little flustered with themselves right now. 11.09 to go in the ball game. 29-10 Lockhart. I'm telling you, folks, Taylor may make it to the state playoffs for an eighth year in a row. This team is really good. Matter of fact, that was an offside penalty oh. on the Lockhart lines, which gives Taylor Duck a fresh set of downs. I don't see how that's possible considering the left tackle stood straight up and nobody had moved. But it is what it is. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. They'll give it to T. Oh, he fakes it. Hits Schneider in the left. And they do a good job as Cortland Zambrano bringing him down at the 14-yard line. Nice play by Cortland Zambrano. As soon as he caught it, he was right on him. But it's second and one. They're moving the ball well here. The this line. game's not over yet. Another punishing tackle by the Lockhart Lions defense. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. H-back, Teeler in the backfield. 
Harms hands it off to him. He cuts it up the middle. He's still on his feet. He's down to about the six-yard line. Tripped up there by number 22, which is George Renteria. It's now first and goal from the seven-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Ducks from the seven-yard line. Lockhart, looks like Coach Herman's going to call a timeout. timeout. So, yep, Lockhart's yep. going to go to a timeout. It's 29 to 10. How about we try to look at some scores or something around the area? All right, and here we go with the Meitler Storage game break. It is Kennedy losing with 7.06 in the fourth quarter, 30 to 18. Edison Golden Bears taking it to Kennedy. Uvalde. Down by one at the start of the fourth quarter, 15 to 14 to win Mavericks. Tyvee, 43, Fredericksburg, Billy's 28. Bernie Champion and Veteran Memorial still knotted up with 924 left to go in the third quarter at 21. I'm still seeing Memorial and Burbank at halftime. Burbank three, Memorial zero. Bernie 16, Medina Valley 14. Looks like that game got back underway. They're in the fourth in the first quarter. And Alamo Heights 25 to 17 over the United Longhorns at the end of the third quarter. And here at Lockhart, here at Taylor, it is Lockhart 29, Taylor 10, but Taylor knocking on the door First of the end zone. The Ducks, Two receivers seven. to the right, one to the left, H back. Teeler in the backfield, they give it to him. He's running around the right side, looking for a space. He's still on his feet, running forward, dives to the five. Actually, his lineman picked him up and threw him to the number two. Jalen Teeler with the carry. It looks like number 72, Isaiah Samaripa with the tackle. So it's second a goal from the three. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They've got their H back. They've got Teeler in the backfield. Harms the quarterback. Schneider's usually who they go to in an area. High snap. Hand off to Teeler. He's driving his way, and he makes it to the end zone. Nope, they didn't signal. They're going to stuff him short. Stuff him at the one. So it'll be third and goal from the one. It looked like Teeler had gotten in, but. Jalen Teeler with the carry. Two-yard gain on the play. It'll be Great pressure up front for the Lockhart Lions and stopping Teeler just shy of the end zone. So they're getting ready. Two to the left, one to the right. I bet you it's going to be Teeler again. H back, Harms, shotgun formation, hands it to him again. Oh, he keeps it. What nice keepers. fake. Harms with a great fake, Touchdown. and he scores on a one-yard scamper around the right Number side. Five, Definitely caught the Lions off a little bit on that one as he, uh, as a quarterback, had the had the ball inside Teeler's hands, and just as he was getting there, I, I want to say it was Eddie Tukar was back there to wrap up the Teeler. And the quarterback just pulled the ball out, and Harms ran right into the end zone for a Taylor touchdown. Great play from the offensive uh, coaching staff for the Taylor Ducks. So Ryan Hansen, the All-American, coming in for the extra point. This is kind of like a chip shot or a two-inch putt for him. Snap is good. The kick is good. It is now 29 to 17 with 9-10 to go here in the fourth quarter. Definitely not a, well, I want to say it wasn't a good sequence for the Lockhart Lions defense. They did have their stops, but Taylor Ducks was able to get down the field with runs and some and a couple of short passes. But they were, able, they were also able to chew up a lot of clock on the defensive side of the ball. So with Lockhart getting the ball back with 9-10 left to go, leading by two scores, you know, technically Lockhart just has to put the ball in the end zone one more time and then they could run the clock out from there. But they got to do it. The last drive Lockhart had, they didn't have too much success. But the last time they didn't have that much success on the offensive line, they came back to the next drive and they, they were able to put up points on the board. So they got the hands team up front just in case. And it looks like the number same nine, old, same Caleb old Jennings in the back. They've got uh, number nine, number Caleb Jennings. To receive for the Lions. And it looks like Cortland Zambrano is also the back there with him. They've been aiming at Cortland Zambrano tonight. Either way, those two kids are fast. 9-10 to go here in the game, 29-17. It is a 12-point game. This game is not over. Lockhart has to take care of business here on this drive. 
I don't know that they're going to be able to return this kick, but you never know. Hansen will kick it off from the 40-yard line. And once again, he is kicking it to the wind as Taylor's going left to right and Lockhart's going right to left. There's the kick, and we will. Well, we nope, they're going to fair catch it. Caleb Jennings fair catches it. We will get it at the 25-yard line. They've changed that rule in college and in high school to where you get it at the 25-yard line to try to get those uh, kickoff returners less injuries. And uh, that's a good job that the UIL has done something like that because, you know, a lot of injuries do happen at the point of contact during the kickoff as you got the kickoff team practically running full speed down the field, you know, and they're colliding with the state with the you know also another team that's moving forward so great job by the uil to make that rule change thinking of the safety of the of the student athletes we've got quite a dancer just below us here he's getting into this game and now the other guy's taking over so 29 to 7 9 10 to go here in the ball game here comes the slot t it's a tight formation we'll see what we get they're going to go with uh, Daquan Ellison, I believe, up the middle. I can't, yeah. Yeah, he didn't get much out of that. I want to say he might have gotten two. They're going to give him three. Four. Oh, they did give him four. So second and six, Daquan Ellison straight up the middle. You got to know these guys are ready for that play. We might want to try to get Daquan outside, maybe behind Noah. Noah can block anybody. It must be yes, nice to I, have a kid like that that's a yes, sophomore. Yes, exactly. I, I even saw Noah go out there and my phone rang, and he even blocked that call for me. <laughs> so he, he's done an excellent job blocking for this Lockhart Lions. So two receivers to the right. Aldonia, one of them. Daquan up the middle. He's not going anywhere. He got stuffed. They man-tackled him up the middle. Number 72, he didn't make the tackle, but Cooper Hansen, basically grabbed the entire stack of people and just threw them backwards. But they did say he got a few more yards, so third and four. I didn't think he even got back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Eight minutes and counting, 29 to 17 Lockhart. They're in no hurry to run any offense oh, right no. now. But still, if you're not in a hurry, of course, Coach Herman wants to continue to keep four. getting four. positive four. yardage four. Right. Yard and moving line. those chains. Aldonia around the left side. He gets gang tackled there. The first guy there was number 42, Reagan Odell, hit him first. They have him marked at about the 32-yard line, so it's going to be fourth and three. Surely we're going to be punting on this. So we're in a scary situation now where you have a great kicker on the other team and you've got a great quarterback on the other team that can throw the ball. We've got to be careful in this situation. So it'll be Alfredo Amez to end for the punt. And he's had two good punts. They don't get a lot of travel time, but when they hit the ground, they usually get a good bounce. Back to receive is number 12, Ronak Nick. Here's the punt. Again, it's an end over end kind of kick. He makes the catch, fair catch. They'll start at their own 36 yard line. Fair Will be first and 10 for Taylor. 12, It'll be first and 10 for the Ducks from the 30. That last yard drive, line. they only had the ball for four plays. I mean, three plays, of course. You know, they went three and out. But Lockhart did take off about two and a half minutes of game clock. So, I guess in a, in a game like this where you're up by two scores, you, you know, taking time or taking points, Coach Herman is a, is, is a great coach has taken up time. And uh, it, <coughs> so far, it's worked out so far just – Lockhart Lions defense is going to have to step up. He's throwing. It got deflected. Nice job there by number 88, Chris Cadell. He jumped up. He blocked Harms' pass, pass and it falls four. incomplete. One yard gain no, they're gonna oh, they're going to say he caught it. Wow. That was Schneider with the diving catch. So second and nine. Didn't look like he caught it, but they gave it to him. Two receivers to the right, one to the left with the H back. Teeler in the backfield with Harms. He's going to throw again. He throws it to the right side to Schneider. Schneider catches. He's out to the 45. 
He's thrown down by Caleb yeah, Jennings. Eddie Tukar out there to help. But they get it a first down. It is first and 10 from their own 45, 46 yard line. 6 5 to go here in the fourth quarter. This kid can, we really need to watch Schneider. He's been the, the go to guy. He's had the last four completions for this Taylor Duck offense. Her, uh, Taylor up the middle, and he breaks it. He's to the 49. Just shy of Number midfield. Number 22, Jalen Taylor with the carry. It's a three-yard gain on the play. It'll be second and seven. He might 49. have gained three yards, almost four. Yeah, three yards on that run. But he paid for all three yards as he was hit several times. Like I said, once, <coughs> once again, pinballing in that area and uh, Lockhart hitting, you know, making hit hard hits. And hard tackles. Two receivers to the right, one to the left with their H back. Teeler still in the backfield. They're going to roll out right with Harms. He's looking. He's going to run. He throws a lob ball, and it just goes out of bounds. He's just throwing that away. So that will make it third and seven with 5.28 to go here in the fourth quarter. This is a huge play for Lockhart and probably four downs for Taylor. Yes, definitely got to be a four-down territory because – with 5.28 left to go, if you give the ball back to the Lockhart Lions on a punt, you might not get the ball back if this offensive line can get back to the form that they were at in the second and third quarter. And a field goal is not going to help them. They've got to score touchdowns. He's going to pass on third down. Got pressure. Here, Sanchez gets Big him. Sack. Sanchez is there. He gets a little bit of help from number 55, Luis Torres. Five, and way back with the sack. The Sanchez with a big hit. Alex Thompson also credited with the sack back there in the back. That was a huge defensive stop for the Lockhart Lions right there. So fourth and a long ways. And 17, the Ducks from the 39-yard line. And you see, nobody's They're going to punt. For the Lockhart Lions. And I am probably expected maybe a fake. I would say a fake as well because I can't imagine they're going to punt in this situation. Clock is still moving. They act like it's no big deal. I'm thinking a fake, though. And they call timeout. Coach is like, guys, come on. Come on. <laughs> so it'll be Taylor calling a timeout with 4.39 to go. It's 29-17 Lockhart. We're going to take a commercial break. You're listening to the Lion Country Broadcast Network. Take sports with Fight Night. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. We are back at Taylor, Texas, where they're going to punt, we think. We think. There's nobody really deep. They're playing just a defense to make sure this is not a fake. And he's going to punt it. And it's going to be one of those line drive punts. But, oh, wow, what a beautiful backspin. He drops it all the way down to the 10. So, I guess it's like throwing an interception down there. I don't know. So, 428 to go in the ballgame, 29 to 17. All Lockhart needs to do now is get about two first downs, and they may have put this one in the bag. It's all up to our offensive line to get yes, this done. Definitely. The last two drives for the Lockhart Lions has been, uh, has been stalled. They had a, a five-play drive and a, and a three and out. So, you know, it's – I'm pretty sure they've worked things out on the sideline and fixed some assignments. And uh, like you said, hopefully two first downs, maybe even three. Choose some clock, choose some yards, and Lockhart should walk, come out this game 2-0. Tight formation, slot T. Garza under center. Man in motion. Hand off. Is that Noah? No, it was not because Noah was blocking. 21, Daquan Ellison. Ah, Daquan Ellison. Number one, JoJo Torres. To be honest, I didn't even see Daquan on the field, so that surprised me he had the ball. Time out. Injury timeout. Injury timeout as we got a tailored uh, duck down. So real quickly, going to go through some things that happened away from Taylor, Texas. Your Lady Lions volleyball team won against Crockett tonight, 25-9, 25-7, in which Abby Ruggio, I know, scored at least, at least 15 of those points on her serve. 
And then 25 to 11, I want to thank Rudy Cadillo. He's my man that knows everything about all other sports that I'm not at. And he turned uh, he turned that in for us. If you've not had a chance to watch the Lady Lions play volleyball, you need to. They play hard. They are all over the court. And I'm not just saying this because it's Rudy Cadillo's daughter, but Carla Cadillo goes from point A to point B to point C in like half a second. That girl is all over the court. We've got a great team. The coach is doing a good job with them. And this team could, could knock on the door for the playoffs come volleyball season. And, you know, that's the thing about the athletic sports. Just about virtually every team in Lockhart High School, you know, whether it's baseball, football, soccer, just about every team has placed themselves in position for play, to make it to the playoffs this year. And wouldn't it be a huge, uh, huge feat if every sporting event made the playoffs this year? Of course, baseball was one game away from making the playoff, and it's been years since they had won a district game. So for the baseball team – with the new head coach, Coach Honeycutt, to be one game away from the playoffs, that's that's a huge statement right there in, in, to show us in, in the direction where Lockhart Lions baseball, and not just that, but Lockhart Lions sports in general, well, is, is to, you know, where people are thinking, okay, it's football and girls softball. Now they're looking at every sport now. Right. And then, you know, Honeycutt is a great baseball coach, but going to another sport, as he put it, Scott Hempenstill, the god of coaching of Lockhart, been oh, here for like man. 97 years, yeah. it seems like. He has his own cross-country meet. His team is 70 and 0, is what he says, because they've taken first in every meet they've been at. They have not lost to anybody. So he says, we've been 70 and 0 because of all the teams they've raced against. And so we'll be talking to him, and we'll be talking with our volleyball coach come homecoming before the game. Yes. Which is next week, too. Yes, it is. Can't believe we're already in homecoming. So here we go. They're going to hand it off to Daquan Ellis, and he breaks it to the right side. He gets around the corner, but he's not able to break free. I think he got out around the 18-yard line. 21, Daquan Ellison with the carry. 3.56 to go here in the ballgame. 29-17, the Lockhart Lions are on top. Uh-oh. Looks like they're going to mark him out Coming short the at the 18. From the 18. Uh, Okay. Lions coming up to the line of scrimmage. There's going to be a quarterback sneak up the middle. Jaden Garza is going to push across the 20 There's yard a line. Penalty on the play. So I'm going to break in real quick because. Coach Henderson, Sheila Henderson, our athletic director, letting me know that Abby Ruggio actually scored 16 points in that game. That's incredible to have one player score all but nine points for your team. So uh, scores are being updated and tweeted and always follow Coach Henderson. Uh, she's always posting the scores, sometimes videos. Make sure you stay involved because you're going to find out what's going on around Lockhart Sports. Well, after an illegal procedure, Lockhart Lions get backed up five yards, so it'll be third down and eight. It's going to be a handoff over the right side. It's going to be short, well short of the first down. It's going to be down at the 16-yard line where Taylor will take another timeout. So, again, Lockhart doing what they need to do, unfortunately. And I know 3.06, that's not a lot of time. But with Harms, the way he throws the ball and the way Schneider runs with the ball as a wide receiver, we're still not out of the woods yet. And we're looking at third and about six. Or, no, the fourth and four they're putting on the board. This guy on the sideline with the little down marker has got to be replaced. Yeah, I'm checking <laughs> him right now. He, he seems a little suspect right now. <laughs> So fourth and four, he's showing fourth and six. Now he's got it back on third. It's hard telling what's going on out here. The scoreboard is showing fourth and four. All we know is Lockhart has the ball with 3.06 to go. Surely they're going to possibly punt in the, if it is fourth down. But again, the yard marker is showing third down. It is, Garza, they, got, they got number uh, number 12 going back for Gar the Garza, Garza's out there. And we're running an offense, so it must be third down. I don't think half of the people know what's going on down there right now. <laughs> so is it third down? Is it fourth down? I don't think the referee, I think they're discussing that right now. 
everybody seems to be confused because Taylor wanted to receive the punt on fourth down. Yeah. We're not punting. And what I don't get, the, the, it is the, fourth yeah, down. The coach's staff for Taylor is stopping the play and say, "Hey, it's fourth down." You'd want to, you'd want them to run the play instead of stopping the play. Right, right. <laughs> but with that, it so, just you know. They re, re clarified everything and now it's fourth down, so it will be number twelve, Rowan Ronak Nick. It'll be fourth and four from the It'll be uh, for the Lions. Alfredo Hamez punting, who's had a good night of punting the ball. Yes, now he's got the win at his back and Coach Herman is gonna leave it in the hands of the defense to close out this game. They're they're coming hard after it. He gets it away. He does not fair catch. No, oh, he did fair catch. I didn't see him fair catch. He'll get it at the 48-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Taylor. 2.51 to go into fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 48 of Lockhart. 29-17, your Lions. Yeah, like I said, Lockhart Lions got a 12-point lead, so that's two scores that Taylor will have to come up in the next two minutes and 51 seconds. But if anything's like, what, like the last drive was, that Lockhart Lions defense – needs to step up again to keep not only the clock going, but to keep Taylor from moving down the field and possibly scoring the, scoring a touchdown or a field goal to get this game closer. I'd like to see our defensive ends meet each other at the quarterback and put some pressure on him so he can't just sit there and throw because Harms is a great quarterback. So they got two receivers to the left, one to the right. They're H-back. They're going to fake the pass or fake the handoff. They're going deep, and he's wide open. And he makes the catch, and Derek, uh, Devin Clark brings him down at the one. Devin got beat on that one, but he did catch up to him and bring him down at the one. Catch was made by number two, Josh Blue. First and goal at the one-yard line, 240, and the clock is still moving. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Teeler up the middle, and he breaks the plane. Oh, wait. One says yes, one says no, and they say yes, he did break the plane. So with 2.29 to go, we have us a ball game here. That's a quick strike right there as Devin Clark got caught looking in the backfield as the receiver got behind him and was able to break three for a, a good chunk of yards, about a 47-yard bomb, which was pretty much almost the same exact play they had in the first quarter that scored them their first points of the game for a touchdown. And the All-Americans coming on now to uh, kick the extra point. Ryan Hansen on to kick. The hold is down. The kick is blocked. Well, that was nice. But it's only a six-point game right now. So will we see an onside kick? My guess is yes. And Devin Clark, who just got beat on that last play, along with uh, Eddie Tukar, were back there, and they both combined for the block extra point. So right now, it's going to come down to the hands team. If they don't punt, I will, I will just question everything about football. 29-23, <laughs> Lockhart Lions with 2.29 to go here in the fourth quarter. The last two possessions, basically, uh, Taylor has come back and made this a ball game. A one-yard run by Cole Harms, Ryan Hansen with the extra point, and then uh, Cole Harms to Josh Blue for a 47-yard touchdown pass. The extra point was no good. You know, and give it up to this Taylor Ducks defense who's been able to hold Lockhart Lions running attack they, uh, they've only been able to gain probably about 30 yards in this set, in this fourth quarter alone. So uh, great job uh, by the Taylor Ducks. Okay, we I'm getting some more updates from uh, Miss Henderson. And uh, let's see. They're tweeting out volleyball scores. Uh, ninth grade volleyball also wins their first district game, 25-16, 25-17. Here with 2.29 to go in the fourth quarter. An onside kick set up. The hands team is going to have to come up big. It's a beautiful onside kick. And I think Taylor got it. Taylor did get it. This is scary. Yes. <laughs> 2.25 to go. Lockhart did not attack the ball. This All-American kicker kicked a beautiful onside kick. 
And now Taylor has the, the, the rope in their hands, and they're going to have to try to move the ball like they just did. It's a six-point game. It'll be first and ten at the Lockhart 48. So Lockhart's defense is going to have to come up big again. Most definitely. Coach Herman was asking a lot from their defense to stop them on that last drive, and uh, Taylor was able to get into the end zone on two plays. So they put eight more seconds on the board, 2.08 to go in the ball game. This game is far from over. This Taylor Ducks team has fought their way back into this game. It looked like it was over. Harms with it. Up the middle to Teeler. Teeler with a good run. Teeler down to the 40-yard line. He's rolling over people. They're going to move quickly as he gets down to the 40. They're lined back up. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Harms is looking to throw. He throws it out to Schneider. Schneider makes the catch around the left side. He's going down to the 27, I believe, where he ran out of bounds. Lockhart is on their heels right now with 1.45 to go in the game. Somebody needs to step up and make a play, or we're going to find ourselves behind late in this ball game. Definitely. They're going to have, them run, have the receiver running out at the 30-yard line. So two receivers to the left, one to the right. Schneider's on the left side. They're blitzing. Teeler with it up the middle. Sanchez brings him down around the ankles, but he gains seven. 135 and counting. They're right back. Schneider's going to move to the right side. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Harms is the quarterback, senior quarterback with Teeler in the backfield. They're going to give it to Schneider on an end around. He breaks around the corner. He gets hit hard. He did not get the first down. I didn't see who made the tackle, though. And he did not get out of bounds either. Taylor does have one timeout to use. That was Aiden Hernandez. 105 to go. Two receivers on the left, one on the right. It's fourth down and about three. Harms with it. He's going to give it to Taylor. No, he tries to grab it back. Harms keeps it. He gets the first down, diving forward. Great. <laughs> that quarterback is Great something Great determination else. by the quarterback right there who was stopped in the backfield, was able to break through the tackle and get across the 20. 48 down. seconds and counting, two to the left, one to the right. Harms is going to spike it, stop the clock at 44 seconds. Holy mackerel, what a game. And I thought maybe I had spit on the glass, but it looks like it's starting to rain a little bit. <laughs> it is starting to rain here a little bit. Not hard, but there is uh, water on the glass. What a ball game. Lockhart's defense is going to have to come up big in the last 44 seconds. Harms is not playing around. So we have second and 10, or first and 10 from the 20. Or no, second and 10 because he spiked it. Harms is looking to the right. He's going to go to the end zone. He's trying to hook it up. Oh, it's out of the reach. Intended for number 14, Santiago Estrada. Third and 10 from 38 seconds to go in the ball game. Woo! It's a good thing field goals only count for three because you got that All-American kicker. But we don't want them in the end zone because they had that All-American kicker. <laughs> Even though Lockhart did block that last extra point try, but... So there's three receivers to the right. Teeler's in the backfield. And here's the snap. Harms is looking. He's being pressured. The throw is out to Schneider at the 20 to the 15. He's tackled inside the 10. He's going to get the first down. It'll stop the clock to move the stick, but it's going to be first and goal from the eight. The clock will start as soon as they get it down. It's going now. Harms has it going. Two to the left, one to the right. Going to hand off to Teeler up the middle, and he breaks free, and he's down to about the two-yard line. This is not looking good if they don't get something done here. 17 seconds, timeout by Taylor. It's coming down to this, second and goal at the two. Taylor trying to get their people in, inspired here. But good gosh, my, uh, Amelia, this yeah. has been crazy. So this- It'll be second down and goal to go. And uh, very, an exciting finish is what we're gonna be looking at. Now, who's it going to go for? Is it going to go our way or is it going to go Taylor's way? But either way, we've, we've 
we're witnessing an exciting game, a great game between two, two well, great schools. I don't think if they run the ball, I don't think they have another play. If they throw the ball, they've got a chance for two more plays. Right. Lockhart's never going to touch the ball on offense again. Unless, for some reason, it ends up 29-29. But right now, it's second and goal from the two-yard line. Two receivers to the right. Schneider's on the right. Teeler's in the backfield. He, Schneider's coming across to the left. He's going to roll out right. He throws it over the top. They make the catch. That throw was to number... 33, Sammy Sanchez, and we're all tied up with 14 seconds to go. So what looked like a game Lockhart was going to win fairly easily is now tied up at 29, and now it's going to come down to Ryan Hansen, the All-American kicker, to win the game for him. And with 14 seconds remaining, it's, things are looking slim. You know, Lockhart blocked the, blocked the last extra point try. See what happens here is uh, waiting for the extra point try. Snaps Snap high, back. but he gets it up and it's good. So we are now down a point with 14 seconds to go. There is a penalty flag. Can it only be against them? It is not. I have a feeling it's on us. We're waiting to see, but the... Taylor's, yep, they called us offside, so it's going to count. This is going to be a tough pill to swallow. It definitely is, and a game that Lockhart was looking good going into the last two minutes, up 12. Now find themselves down one, 30 to 29, with 14 seconds left to go in the contest. So, and again, go back to the All-American kicker. They would be crazy not to have him kick it out the back of the end zone right. and make us go the entire distance. You, know, you got to give it up to the Taylor defense, too, because, I mean, up until the third quarter, Lockhart had over 370 yards rushing. Well, 350 yards rushing it up, in, uh, you know, up until the beginning of the fourth quarter. After that, They've only gained 49 yards in the fourth quarter, and the Taylor defense has really stepped up. Yes, they have. To give their offense the opportunity to come back from being 12 down to being up by one, 30 to 29, with 14 seconds left to go in the game. It all comes down to this kickoff. Taylor people excited on their feet. Their team is excited. Aldonia and... Daquan Ellison are back to receive the kick. If I were a betting man, Daquan Ellison's going to end up with the ball in his hands if they can even get the ball in their hands with this kid kicking. The magic man, Daquan Ellison, can we get him the ball and get him some freedom? It's kicked at Daquan Ellison. It's going to drop in front of him. He picks it up at the three. He's going to fake the handoff. Oh, he does. No, he cuts back, and he gets dropped at the six-yard line. So with nine seconds to go, we're going to have to go 94 yards to win this game. This is probably the last play of the game. More than likely it will be, Scott. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, a, like you said, a tough pill to swallow for the Lockhart Lions. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to go back and take a look at these last two drives and see where it went wrong at. But, you know, they, like I said, you got to give it up to the Taylor defense who was able to control this offensive rushing attack from the Lockhart Lions and only allow 49 yards in the, in the fourth quarter alone after giving up 350 in the first three. So it looks like we have Alex Thompson and Aldania on the left side. Daquan Ellison, the only back in the backfield, and someone's calling a timeout. Delay of game, so that doesn't make it any better. And Daquan is on the ground. Don't I think he's just frustrated. So it's now at the four-yard line. 96 yards to go in nine seconds. Garza under center. They're going to throw it out quickly to Aldonia. He gets around the corner, but he's knocked out of bounds with five, set four seconds to go. 
and a little bit of gesturing in the face, that would have gotten a flag. So we are four seconds away, 90 yards from the end zone. They get everybody lined up. They're going to roll out right. They're going to throw it deep. And it's incomplete, and that is your ball game. Taylor Ducks. Taylor Ducks come from behind and take and steal the game, their first win in this stadium, 30-29 to over your Lockhart Lions. Like we said, this is going to be a tough pill to swallow for the Lions as they were total control of the game going into the fourth quarter, and it kind of wheels fell off offensively in the fourth quarter. Yes, and Alex, Th Alex Thompson got behind the defender. The ball just went in and out of his hands, and, you know, he, it had been open daylight for him. But as it is, you know, tough pill to swallow, but Lockhart Lions will learn from this and move forward as they were gonna be, they're going to be facing Burnett Bulldogs at Lions Stadium next week at 7.30, for, and it'll be Lockhart Lions homecoming night. So uh, it's, it's going to be a big game for the Lockhart Lions to get back into the win column. Well, we're going to take some co a commercial break. Then we're going to come back with your offense and defense players of the game. We'll wrap it up and close up shop for the night. You're listening to Lions Country Broadcast Network and Connect Sports with Fight Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, we're back here at Taylor, Texas, and unfortunately, the rain is coming down. It is 30 to 29. The Lions lose with 14 seconds to go in the game after being up by 12 points, and it looked like in control of the contest. They dropped the score 30 to 29. We're back here. We're going to give you your offensive, defensive players of the game. Then we'll get Emilio's thoughts. I'll do some closing up. One thing I do want to throw out, Randy. I, Randy Fry, I do appreciate you being our QA tonight. Uh, we always appreciate you. And McKelty Altier, thanks again for your great work as our producer. And I guess, first and foremost, the Farm Bureau defensive player of the game, um, he just was wrecking havoc up front. And these kind of guys don't get much credit. But I feel like, and we decided to go with number 75, a junior defensive lineman, Faustino Gonzalez as the Farm, uh, the Farm Bureau defensive player of the game just felt like he had a great game up front causing a lot of problems. And that's who you have on defense. And now I'll hand it off to Emilio for the offensive player of the game. Yes, and as we continue with the first Lockhart National Bank postgame show, the Chuck Nash offensive player of the game, surprise, surprise, is Daquan Ellison who had 26 carries, 261 yards, and scored four touchdowns for the Lockhart Lions in an amazing game for him. I'm pretty sure he would he would much rather have the win than uh, the accolade of being uh, the Chuck Nash Offensive Player of the Game. But congratulations to both players for the Lockhart Lions. They did an amazing job today. Came up a little bit short, as Scott Smith said. He goes, uh, they were up 12 with two to go, two minutes to go. End up losing 30-29 on, on a touchdown pass with 14 seconds left to go in the game. But it's one of those things that they'll learn from them. This is a young squad that we're looking at. They're young. Even though we got veteran seniors, 
like Daquan Ellison and a couple other seniors that are out there, you know, they're these young guys, the juniors and sophomores, they're going to learn from this and they're going to move forward. And I'm pretty sure Coach Herman will have this defense even stronger next week, especially for homecoming night. All right. Well, going to let uh – when it kind of it's kind of hard to walk away with with the way things went because again, the game plan was working and then it's just like the wheels fell off. Yes, uh, a learning experience. Like we said, I think we had three guys returning to our defense from last year's team, and we have some basketball players out there, and we've got a lot of last year's JV guys that are mm -hmm. learning how to play at the varsity level. Again, I'm I, I there's no reason to throw in the towel because. This is a good Taylor football yes, team. They got is. a great quarterback. Uh, Schneider's a great receiver. Taylor and Martinez, great running backs. A good line offensively and defensively. And her defense is amazing. And you throw in an All-American kicker. Yeah. So, you know, it just, it was a good team. We ended up on the short end of the stick. And like he said, we'll try to bounce back and do our thing for homecoming next week. Pre-game will be at 7.00. And the kickoff will be at 7.30. We're going to interview the cross-country coach and the volleyball coach before the game. Yes, you don't want to miss out on that either. Exactly. Um, they're having outstanding seasons, so make sure you tune in. Probably going to be around 7.05, 7.10, somewhere in there. We're going to start the interview process with them. Again, we want to thank Randy Fry for uh, QAing tonight. McKelty Altier producer, Emilio the Sarge Juarez, as the play by or the color commentator and the stat guy, and myself, Scott Smith, we want to wish you a good night. Thank you for listening, and have a safe trip going home, folks.